you here or were you just I was in and out. Claudia? I had three meetings all at the same time. Six? Mm -hmm. One was a board I meeting. Think that's six, but <laughs> circle back um, here. I'm going to call, call the meeting to order. Bear with me, it's my first night your mic chair. Is your mic on? Yeah, well, there we go. Slow start. I'm calling the meeting to order. Um, is the recorder on? Yes. And is there any of the public that may be speaking, thinks they may be speaking, um, and have you signed in? And I guess we need to swear in the speakers. We need to call roll first. Okay. We'll call the roll first. Brian Weber, absent. Claudia Willis, present here. John Miller, here. Ronna Saxon, here. Kristen Finn, here. Jim Chard, here. Elise Lindstrom, absent. Are there any changes to the agenda? No. Do we need to take a motion, please? We need a motion. Yeah, I'd like to move uh, approval of the agenda as written. Second. Call the roll, please. Brian Weber, absent. Claudia Willis? Yes. John Miller? Yes. Rhonda Saxon? Yes. Kristen Finn? Yes. John, Jim Chard? Yes. Elise Lindstrom, absent. Mm. Okay, now we'll swear in the public. Just one second. We've got minutes on there, too. We have um, two sets of minutes. So you can just see if there's mm -hmm. an approval of those minutes. All right. Well, we'll shall we approve the November second minutes then? I move approval of the. Do we need to do them separate? Separately? If you don't have changes, you can do. I them guess together. we do. Okay. I move uh, approval of the October 19, 2022, and the November 2, 2022 minutes. Second. Brian Weber, Hampson, Claudia Willis. Yes. Jim, John Miller. Yes. Rhonda Saxton? Yes. Kristen Finn? Yes. Jim Chard? Yes. Lisa Instrum Mapson. Okay, now we're going to swear in the speakers. <laughs> <laughs> if you plan to speak on any item at all, if you can stand up and raise your right hand and Diane will swear you in. Even if you just might speak, it doesn't hurt. And then, okay. Please raise your right hand by the authority of me, the notary of the state of Florida. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Okay, this is a quasi-judicial meeting, so I will read the rules. We, we actually need to take comments from the public related to any non-agenda items first. That's not on my list. I'm wondering if you have the right one. <laughs> but that's number seven but will we take uh, are there any public comments not on the agenda can take as long as you want, as long as it's under three minutes. No. <laughs> <laughs> George Long, 46 North, Swinton. Um, at the end of the meeting, you usually have a discussion. And when you do, could somebody update me on what's happening with the little cottages that are uh, at the Delray Social Block there? What their status is? Are they contributing, non-contributing, or whatever? Thank you. Now you can read the quasi-judicial rules. Now Thank you, Claudia. <laughs> this hearing shall be conducted in accordance with the City of Delray Beach quasi-judicial rules. The applicant and the city shall be permitted to present their case. The public shall be allowed to speak for three minutes each or a maximum of six minutes if the person represents an organization or a group of people who are present but agree not to speak. The city commission the board members and staff and applicant may be allowed to cross-examine a witness. The city or the applicant will be uh, allowed to offer rebuttal testimony. The decision to approve or deny an application or appeal may not legally be made upon personal views as to whether a project is a good project or not. 
nor may a decision be based on the number of citizens who support or oppose a particular project. The law requires that all decisions must be made on the basis of whether the project meets the requirements of the law, the comprehensive plan, and the land development regulations. For the record, I'm Michelle Hewitt, and I'd like to enter agenda item 8A um, for 105 Northeast 7th Street, COA 2023-019 into the record. Um, the applicant is here to present. Yes, you can go to um, that podium over there. While he's making his way to the podium, could we do ex parte communications? Right here? Sure. None. 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 Thank you. All right, good evening. I'm Dean Olet with Ashdino Enterprises. I'm here on behalf of the Baum Residence, 105 Northeast 7th. We had sent in a PowerPoint. That's the existing house. Basically, they would like to go with a black shingle roof instead of the whitish gray shingle roof. That's pretty much it. Um, is there a remote over there on that side? Oh. Yeah, okay, you can click through with so that's the house before we did the renovation of adding on a garage. We're in the process of doing that, and the roof came up um, now that we're just about finished with it, and they decided they didn't like the grayish color. So here's the neighboring houses. We got a flat roof, brown roof. This one has a dark brown roof. Um, that's the shingle we're looking to use. That's the extent of it. Okay. If you want to have a seat, and they'll call you up if they have any questions, but we'll let staff go ahead with their uh, with their uh, presentation. Thanks. Okay. Once again, um, this is for 105 Northeast Seventh Street, COA 2023-019. Um, the request before the board is a color change to the approved asphalt shingle roof from gray to onyx black on the existing contributing structure and approved additions. So here we have the subject property outlined in red. Um, directly um, south is Northeast 7th Street, um, George Bush Boulevard to the north, um, and North Swinton to the west, and Northeast 2nd Avenue to the east. Um, brief history or background. Um, the Minimal traditional residence was constructed in 1941 and is considered a contributing building within the locally designated Del Ida Park Historic District. Um, this property recently came to the board in 2021, and this was approved uh, for the construction of a new one-story two-car garage addition to the west side of the existing contributing one-story structure and forward of the existing non-contributing two-story addition. Also approved was a one-story square foot or addition to the rear north side of the two-story non-contributing addition. Um, the, specifically, the project um, roof material was approved to match the existing structures at the 2021, or for the 2021 approval. So this is the front of the um, residence or the um, main original residence, um, and you can see to the left um, the addition. Um, the roof is outlined in red here. Um, this is another angle, so you can see uh, the addition and the original structure here. This is also still from the front or south elevation. Um, this is the rear north um, elevation. Um, again, the roof is outlined in red. Um, this is the side or east elevation. Um, this is the side on the other side, west elevation. Um, another angle from the west elevation. Um, this is another angle. This is um, again outlining the roof structure in, um, with the red. Um, and then you can see some of the um, additions here, all again um, are proposed with the black onyx um, roofing. Another angle here. Um, this is directly in front of the structure. Um, and these are some of the adjacent properties. This is to the east, um, as the applicant showed. 
Um, and then this is the property to the west. Um, and then the property um, across from them. Um, so this on the left is the approved slash existing roof color and the proposed is on the right in the onyx black. Um, so these are the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation. Um, the staff uses for analysis and for the board to use based on preserving rehabilitation reconstruction of historic buildings. These are the visual compatibility standards for new construction all improvements in historic districts. And these are the findings uh, for the board to use um, as well. And that concludes my presentation. And now, are there any public comments? Yeah. No public comments. Any rebuttal or cross-examination from staff? None from staff. All right, we're in board discussion. Uh, let's just see if the applicant has any rebuttal or cross-examination as well. I'll do that. Okay, go ahead, board discussion. A quick question of staff. So, I mean, this is a pretty cut and dried, is it just the color change, is that it? And it was that dramatic of a change? Um, the color was just, it's just dark, significantly darker than what's currently there. And they were approved to match what was existing. Okay, um, it was a pre-approval. Yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. I was wondering the same thing. Why are we seeing this? Yeah, yeah I mean, it's going to fade to gray anyway over time. But, right. um, all right, I'm fine with it. Me too. Okay, I, I have a couple questions, but Jim, you go ahead first. Uh, my main question is just um, from the justification letter, uh, homeowners would like to change the color of the roof shingle color for durability of the wear and tear of the material. Uh, my question would be changing the color, the color really accomplishes that? Um, Maybe that's the applicant. Oh, yeah. If you wouldn't mind just going over to the podium just because that's where the video captures you. Thank you. Okay, so mainly it's because of the tree in the front yard. The roof's a mess all the time because it's got a giant banyan tree in the front. They love the tree, it's not going anywhere. So that's pretty much their reasoning. It hides the staining. That's a good argument. <laughs> Especially because he's Mr. Landscape. Yeah. Okay, uh, I have a, a question. Since all decisions that we make are based inward into the district, um, are there any historic, not, not infill or new additions, but any historic buildings with a dark, with this dark roof? There are structures with dark roofs. I haven't, I haven't gone out to look at Delida, but I know in Oshad there are. Um, and but doesn't the rule uh, mean say within this district? Oh, yes. I mean there are dark roofs, and they have been, they do exist on historic structures. Um, I would have to look. I mean, isn't that what we're supposed to make our decision on if it's compatible? with the, the existing and, historic yeah. structures. Um, so it would be good to know that. Otherwise, we're introducing a new color, correct? Okay. I, I, I feel like it's, I mean, could I say specifically if there is a roof of this exact color in a historic district, I wouldn't be able to tell you that. And I don't know if staff could either. Um, maybe you could, maybe you couldn't, but I don't think it's that much of a departure. It's a shade, it's not really a color. I mean, so it's the same material, mm -hmm. the exact yeah. same shingle or whatever. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's the same material, it's just. It's just a different shade. I mean, literally, there's thousands of shades that it could potentially be in browns or pans or whites or creams or whatever so I don't think you would be able to do much of anything new at all without departing from the palette that's already there so I'm still in favor of it 
Well, that's not the way the Secretary of Interior standards are written, and that's what we use as a basis for changes. It does say it should be the same color. Do we have any elevations that show the color as it is or was going to be compared to what it will be with this change, if approved? We do have this. I can see how that would be dirty a lot with your banyan tree. I mean, in a way, that, that really isn't a black. It looks to me like. Well, it's going to fade. I 100% guarantee it's going to fade. But I mean, yeah, I understand that. Claudia's point, it is, a, it is a departure from what's currently there. Yep. But uh, again, I, I don't have a problem with it. So. I'm just saying, I would characterize that as gray, certainly, some of it. Call it a charcoal or. Yeah plate or something. Um, yeah, I'd like to make a motion if nobody else has any other comment and we go from there. Okay. So, I'd like uh, Ms. John Miller, I'd like to approve, move to approve the certificate of appropriateness 2023-019, the property located at 105 Northeast 7th Street, Delight Park Historic District finding that the request and approval thereof is consistent with a comprehensive plan and meets the criteria set forth in the land development regulations. Second. Brian Weber, absent. Claudia Willis? No. John Miller? Yes. Rhonda Saxton? Yes. Kristen Finn? Yes. Jim Chard? Yes. Lisa's from Maps. Okay, good luck with your new roof. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're ready for the next item. Um, I'd like to enter agenda item 8B for 227 North Swinton Avenue, COA 2023 026 into the record. Um, and the applicant is here to present their um, project. While he's making his way up, can we do ex parte communications again? None. 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 Okay. All right. Hello, board members. I'm Joe Labonos, my wife, Mary. Uh, we live in a single family home, as you see in the background of this title slide. At 227 North Swinton, we've lived there for 27 years. Uh, it's been our primary residence. Our kids grew up there and went to Trinity down the street. So we, we can go ahead to the next slide. Oh, I have the next slide, sorry. <laughs> so why are we doing this? Because when we moved in, uh, as part of the inspection, we already knew that the roof was leaking and we made arrangements with the seller to uh, accommodate for that. So we had to put a roof on when we moved in because it was leaking. So that was 27 years ago. And I guess, uh, lo and behold, uh, two we leaks have emerged in calendar year 2022. So we think it's time for us to put on a new roof. So this is a current photo. These next three slides are current photos of the property. You can see the roof as it appears today. It was white, but you know we mentioned in the previous presentation, you know things it doesn't stay white very long. Actually, um, that's the property from across the street. So the proposal we were asking is if we could still install a white roof, but we were asking if we could switch to a metal roof, a white standing seam roof, instead of uh, a tile roof. And some of the reasons that we put forth. I do that. Uh, we were looking at the standard that um, the staff had referred us to, and we were thinking that it's uh, there's no really predominant uh, roof type in in OSHAD. It's all kinds of roofs, all kinds of materials, uh, shingles, tiles of different colors. There's some metals, um, so it doesn't seem like I'm I'm breaking any precedent there by having a, a metal a metal roof. 
uh, it's going to stay white. Um, there's one notice, it's different on this slide, that uh, I didn't have an opportunity to review the staff report before. Um, in the original, I forget what kind of, what color this is, the yellow card, the white card, the pink card, whatever. You know, it said white and flat was on this, on this record, but I guess the city has done some further research and find out actually it was white originally in 1950, but it wasn't flat, it was S. Barrel, I'm sorry, barrel. Uh, so uh, anyway, that's neither here nor there, I hope. Uh, we're proposing to put a white metal roof on. Um, so at the time I thought that matched at least two of the characteristics, so it was white and it's flat. So visually and aesthetically, we're proposing it's, you know, it's a clean, I look and frankly, it's, we think it's going to retain its uh, nice, uh, tiny, tidy appearance uh, much longer than our tile roof has done. Um, I can, uh, we can attest that, uh, especially living on Swinton, uh, our gleaming tile roof doesn't stay gleaming for very long. And actually, to prove the point, when I went out to take these pictures, Along came a Publix truck right as I was taking the pictures. So there, you know, why is my dirt? Why is my roof dirty so quickly? There you go, right there. Um, thank you, Publix. <laughs> so some examples of white standing seam roof. Uh, I mentioned you've probably seen these in the course of your other uh, preservation work. Um, this is an, this is uh, just an example from the manufacturer uh, photo. Uh, you can see in this light, it looks so white you can't even see the seams in that particular bright light. This is a, a house, a, a two-story structure that is actually at 2nd, uh, Northeast 2nd and 1st Avenue uh, next to the yoga studio. That has a white standing seam roof. You see it in a little bit different light. Um, just got to, what you'd expect, a, you know, a clean, clean look. So some of the factors we're considering, uh, the installation time and costs, it's going to be uh, on a matter of weeks for us to put the metal roof in. A tile roof is going to take months, and we've got, we've got a second leak now that we're, uh, we're you know, put a Band-Aid over, but we're not, uh, we might have to wait four, four to five months. Our, my roofing contractor informs me uh, in order to get the materials for a replacement tile roof. Also, uh, the metal roof is going to be Maybe not significantly, but less expensive than the uh, tile. Um, maintenance, of course, uh, we've found over the years, since, especially since the roof gets dirty, there's a, uh, always a conflict. I'd really like to have it clean, I really would. But I don't want anybody up there walking on it, right? And it seems that's always the conflict. You know, if you're going to clean it, you're going to usually have to have somebody up there uh, either a, spraying something or with a machine moving it around on the tile roof so you know tiles get cracked um, I would, every time we get it clean it's always a nail biter you know are we going to have a leak afterwards or not so we tend to put it off a little bit longer so then the roof doesn't look uh, you know, as nice as we look we think the metal roof will uh, maintain its uh, really nice appearance longer and be easier to, to keep uh, keep up with that appearance um, longevity is a big factor in this for us um, we intend to, we intend for this home to be our primary residence basically indefinitely. Um, and to be blunt, I don't want to be putting a new roof on when I'm 80 or 90, if I, if I can avoid that. Um, so uh, it's going to be our children's problem is what I'm going for. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that was it. Thank you for your attention. Do I stay here? Go ahead. It's up to you. You can, you can sit down, and if okay. they have questions, they'll ask well, you. I'm not going still have her, her to go, and then public comment, and then sure. we'll call you back up if they need you. And staff. Okay. Once again, this is for 227 North Swinton Avenue, um, COA 2023-026. Um, the subject request is for the replacement of the existing white S-tile roofing with a white standing seam metal roof on the existing contributing structure. Um, the subject property is outlined in red. It is adjacent to North Swinton Avenue. Some brief history on the property. Um, it was constructed in 1950 and is considered contributing within the locally and nationally designated Old School Square Historic District. Um, 
The structure is in the minimal masonry style, is, and it's built of concrete block covered in stucco with minimal ornament, ornamentation, a covered front porch, and a white S tile roof. The home was originally built with a barrel tile roof, and the existing white S tile roof was installed in 1995. So here we have um, the front or west elevation. Um, you can see the roof outlined. Uh, this is the S tile. Um, and then from another angle, um, so you can kind of see the, the colors change a bit from the angle. Um, this is another angle, uh, so you can see kind of both sides of the structure from the front. Um, so here are some metal roofs in Oshad. Um, and then we have some shingle roofs in Oshad as well. Um, and then some tile roofs in Oshad. There's barrel, S, and um, flat tile. So this is the original permit from 1949, the construction um, permit. And you can see the barrel tile roofing um, in the rectangle there. Um, and then in 1995, again, it was changed to uh, S tile. And this is the yellow building card here where you can see that the uh, it's checked off as tile and then the ornamental is checked off, which is um, means that it was barrel. And then this is the building color materials um, sheet where they're proposing the white and then on the right is the um, the brochure of all of the metal roofing colors. Um, so because the proposed material um, is different um, than the original material and style um, of, on the structure, the board would need to make a determination that the standing sea metal roof would be an appropriate roofing material for use on the subject minimal masonry style structure that allows for the relationship of materials, color, and texture to be considered visually compatible with the predominant materials used in the historic building within the old school square historic district and for the subject property. So here we have the Secretary of the Interior Standards um, that staff used for the analysis and for the board. Um, the visual compatibility standards apply the same way. And then these are the findings um, for the board. And that concludes my presentation. Is there any public comment? Okay, seeing none, then is there any rebuttal or cross-examination from staff or applicant? None from staff. I was just curious. Uh, Sorry, if it could come up to the podium, thank you. It's, it's, it's just curious. Uh, this, for, this version of the oh, has the tile as the tile flat. as the check in the wrong in the other spot is flat so that's why I thought white and flat but anyway doesn't matter I'm sorry the other thing I meant I forgot to mention is that since I submitted the application um, one of the the roofing contractors informed me that they can't all, uh, order white anymore so in the in tile in, in tile in any the manufacturer is not supplying it anymore. That was what. The, sorry, what, what's the name? What's the name of the manufacturer? Eagle. Eagle. Sorry, Eagle Manufacturing. Okay, any, any further public discussion? Okay, seeing none, we're on board discussion. Last bit of information really throws things into a different category, doesn't it? I, and and I've heard that I have an S tile roof, um, and and we have crack tiles, and replacements are difficult. Um, this one is a little bit more challenging for me, because I know the S tile is not the original; it's barrel tile. S tile is made to look like barrel tile, but a cheaper way of doing it. Um, Surprised this roof got 45 years out of the first one. Um, from 50 to, to 95, um, I would prefer to see something along the same lines as what's there now um, for continuity of it. However, the practical challenges of it are, I think, a mitigating factor. So, I mean, I'd like to see what everybody else has to say. Is there only one manufacturer of roof tiles? I mean, can we not look at other manufacturers? I mean, I, 
that I can't address. Would you, uh, may I ask? Is that a question that you're actually asking the applicant yeah. or you're just stating yeah. it? Okay. No, I was just stating that rhetorically for the board. But um, Michelle, could you read um, page 40 Delray Beach Historic Preservation Design Guidelines that is in your staff report? Could you read that aloud, please? And also, what's recommended by the Secretary of Interior Standards under roofs? Um, okay. Um, page 40 says, because they have a limited useful life, many roofs have been replaced over time. Sometimes the materials used in the replacement are not original to the building. Every effort should be made to identify the original roofing material and to use that material in the event of a non-historic roof. In the event a non-historic roof is replaced. Um, do you want me to read all of the paragraphs under the recommended? Uh, the recommended on um, the Secretary of Interior's guidelines, please. Um, replacing in kind an entire roof covering or feature that is too, too deteriorated to repair um, if the overall form and detailing are still evident, using the physical evidence as a model to reproduce the feature or when the replacement can be based on historic documentation. Examples of such a feature could include a large section of roofing, a dormer, or a chimney. If using the same kind of material is not feasible, then a compatible substitute material may be considered. Um, replacing only missing or damaged roofing tiles or slates rather than replacing the entire roof covering, and then replacing an incompatible roof covering or any deteriorated non-historic roof covering with historically accurate roofing material, if known, or another material that is compatible with the historic character of the building. Okay, thank you. Do we have any more board Are you discussion? going to comment on that? Would I like to comment on it? I, I like to, as chair, wait till everyone else has commented. But um, well, that's, it seems pretty obvious to me that um, the criteria, which we're supposed to make our decisions on, would be against changing it to a metal roof. Um, they're encouraging the orig original roof. There is some wiggle space for um, using, let me get the exact words. Compatible substitute material. A compatible substitute material may be considered. So I would consider replacing it with the same that is on there. Um, I don't see if you're going to change it from the existing, then it should go back to the original, the way I read these. But I would think that S-style was considered compatible and could be considered again. When this was a historic district when the roof was changed in the first place. So this historic district was created in 89, and this um, roof was changed in 95. So it went through the process at one point. Do we have any documentation of that, or is that where you originally got this? Um, we have um, permit records. Um, of but it was approved, I'm assuming, by HPB in '95. Um, I haven't. I didn't see records for that. Um, it was definitely in our permit records, like just the city's permit records, like in our like system that we use. You're that was approved, approved by staff. Yeah, it was approved. Um, I'm not sure the method, but. Could, I can say that we did, we, we did not appear in 95. Was we weren't called picture? to appear. I'm sorry. Could you put up the picture of the um, original, like back where you had the card and the, uh, I think you have right before that. Right oh, before this one? Oh. Mm -hmm. That. Those columns there? The, the columns aren't the same as what you have either. Those are round. Yeah, those, there's not. And the outriggers don't show on this drawing either. And there's not, there's only two columns. There's not two and two halves. Yes, the. It no, just, we didn't change that. That's the. That's, that's it just references the roof was changed in 95. Tell, but it looks like I can't tell. This looks like those are the old crank. I don't know if jealousy windows 
one point. So the, the columns are different. The windows have been replaced. Mm-hmm. And that were your show. If they were jealousy, they've been replaced. But if that's not jealousy, the, right now the original windows just double sash or what's in there? Double hung. Double hung sorry. But definitely the columns are not like that. Not, not since we front doors own changed. the property. Yeah, a lot has been. I, I mean, it doesn't really look like that. I mean, there have been a lot of changes. I, I'm not. I, I do agree with um, Claudia in that. Uh, on this particular house, I do feel like changing to a metal standing seam seems inappropriate. This seems to be a very, um, this house has a lot of history. Um, uh, a prominent owner, uh, looks like maybe only three owners. And, you know, to be a good steward of this historic property, I think it would be best to go back with um, tile roof, an S tile, a uh, barrel tile in the white. Um, I'm not telling you what to do, but um, there are companies that paint the roofs and um, that might be an option for you. Uh, they you need to put, put on a, a polymer different color tile it. and then paint it? They, 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 I'm not trying to tell you what to do. Yeah, no, I understand. <laughs> I, I, I mean, it's not an attractive option because it's going to wear again it's going to involve first the white if it's white tile it won't stay white it's going to be gray like within three or four months and then we come into the cycle of we have somebody up there walking on it and cleaning it and maybe you know cracking the tile or damaging the underlayment or do I let it get grayer a little longer before I have to bite the bullet <clears throat> and from part of what I see it is I think if we put it if we put on the tile and it's, the first day it's going to be gleaming and it's, and it's going to look great Sir. There'll be courses that run. Sir, oh, sorry. I think only if they have a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Pending. Um, it's okay. Sorry. I, I think there was a little bit of confusion of whether she was my, asking that or not. My fault. I'm sorry. Thank you. Do we know what um, surrounding houses have in terms of roof? Are there metal seam roofs within a block north or south? We have images of metal roofs yes, in I was gonna say, well, They gave image, images in the report, and... I, I'm asking specifically on the block face. Uh, no. the, the applicant might have an answer for you. Pick me, pick me. <laughs> um, we're still asking, in board discussion, okay. if, if you don't mind. Do you want your question answered I would like by my, the applicant? Yeah. Go ahead. If you're asking just on the block there facing me, no. But within that, but in Oshad, just on the next block over, that's still in Oshad. The half of Northwest First Ave that's still in North. The answer is yes. And the white standing seam that I showed in my presentation is on <clears throat> Second Street. The one block south of that and First Avenue, there's a yoga studio there. There's a parking lot across, you know, over by uh, what's the construction place? B and something construction. There's a two story uh, structure there and that has a white standing seam. But directly facing me, no. But, you know, next to me is uh, dark shingles. Uh, and then the other side of me are tile, but they're not, they're a different color. And then across the street are tile of another color. and. Uh, another shingle across the street. And I don't think there's any metal on our yeah. in the ten houses of or twelve or whatever of our. No, I don't think there's any metal in that immediate. But within walking distance and inside Oshad, still the answer is yes. Within walking distance. Oh, yeah. The yeah. the second question I have is on the availability question. Would be right to assume that's a supply chain problem and will be resolved sometime in the future. If you want to speak, you can if you're an agent of the applicant. If you just introduce yourselves on, if you haven't been sworn in. Robert Campbell. You haven't been sworn in? No. Okay, if, if Diane, if you could swear him in. Please raise your right hand by the authority vested in me, the notary of the state of Florida. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. And state your address as well. 
my, my home address. Or your business address. I don't, uh, it's on my business card. I never write myself. <laughs> Sorry. I think it, his home, home address will do. Yeah, yeah home is fine 422 as well. Southwest Port St. Lucie Boulevard, Port St. Lucie, Florida. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question about availability, there are two manufacturers, Burrell and Westlake or Eagle. Um, Burrell, if you can get a time frame from them, like I ordered a Burrell roof back in April. I've yet to even be put on their schedule for a build. They're more worried about new construction. Eagle is much easier. When I say easier, Eagle will give me a time of somewhere between 20 and 24 weeks from the time you place the order to when it will be delivered. As of November 29th, they've stopped all white. I don't know if it's going to come back. They don't know if it's going to come back. I would assume, but that's just an assumption. They've not given us a direct time. And again, Burrell's just, they're not very, they don't care so much about the consumer, the homeowner. They're more uh, mass production. And is this the S tile that you're referring to? Any, any tile of any white. Any tile. Yes. Girl, S. Flat, doesn't matter. White is done. No. Is yeah. there a reason for that? No. They just pulled it. They pulled about four colors. Again, I can't imagine them keeping white off forever, but I can't tell you if and when it's going to come back on. Sorry. Are there, other, are there other colors of available? Course. Absolutely, there's other colors. I was by, by the homeowner had said you know white. you had to go well because he had white I was I guess he was assuming he had to go back white and you know, standing seam you've got twice the longevity you can get up and walk on it you don't have to clean it as much it's kind of a self cleaning I mean there's a lot to a standing seam and you've seen million dollar homes with standing seam it doesn't take away from the home you know there's there's no devaluing of of that property by any means. So my issue is I think it's going to change the whole look of the house. I agree. It definitely would change the whole look of the house, and it's not an appropriate roof or any. It, it will not. change. It, sorry, sorry. I think I think they're done with the question. Yeah. But if they ask you yeah. another one, you're you're free to answer. <laughs> but they are in their board discussion now. I mean, just looking back at the images, you know, it's S tile. I guess is what it is right now, which is like a form of a barrel tile. And then you're going. I think. Um, I think I saw you had the material. There, if you, can I, can we just see? Careful of the edges. You want to pass it, or I don't want to pass it. Yeah, just see it. Mm -hmm. The color's okay. So that's a one-inch standing seam with what they call striations, which gives the roof strength. Thank you. You're down, you're you're uplifting your wind. This can go a little bit taller to give it more depth. But it does run this way. Thank you. Could I ask a, a related question? If it were a different color, let us say a gray, what's the time frame and availability of that? Still the same amount, a, a half a year. Yes. Every roof, they say like readily available or if it's specialty color. Um, the readily available is yes, they are, they, they are making that, but they're all made when they're ordered. It's not like they just have a warehouse where they pick it up and grab it off the shelf. Okay. Thank and they are, it is made here in Florida, both Burrell and Eagle. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so some challenges. Um, again, my concern, I have a couple of concerns. I agree. I think the S tile would look much more appropriate on this roof. However, at the same time, I look at the long game and if we are preserving and protecting a historic home that then is less likely to incur damage or whatever else, um, you know, I'm all for that as well. I want to make sure that, you know, we're kind of in a bend but not break situation, but I, um, I'd have to defer to, I think, Claudia and Rhonda and, and Kristen, who have had historic homes in this district and are familiar with that. Now, if we do deny the motion, though, could we pre-approve a 
they had different color of a S style and then it wouldn't have to come back? Or Is this something that can be administratively approved if it were S tile or barrel tile? The reason it's here is because it's standing seam, right? Mm -hmm. um, and as long as the color is... He's changing the roof material. Well, if it's going to, if they're keeping S tile. If it's S tile, that can be administrative. It's like for like, yeah. Mm -hmm. But if it's a different color? Um, depends how drastic it is. Well, they're still six months out to get any kind of tile, and he's got leaks. So you kind of have to look at that picture, too. I don't think it would look the same in another color, like a multicolored you know, terracotta or something in the house would take on a different flavor as well. You know, one of the things that's striking me is what, what I'm hearing from the applicant is this is a business practice. So that anybody who comes before us and wants to talk, if, correct me if I'm wrong, who wants to talk about a barrel tile or an S tile, it's going to be a six month process because that's the way the business works. It's not, we're not just talking about this one building in that case. We're talking about anybody who come before us. Did I state that incorrectly? Oh, you stated that correctly. It's 20 to 24 weeks is your average. That's the business practice. It's a business practice. From, from the manufacturer standpoint, yes. Not my standpoint. I'd love to put it on tomorrow. <laughs> okay, I got it. What's the lead time for standing seam? Three weeks. I'm not willing to compromise. You know, we, uh, the architects and roofing agents, they, they serve their client. Our client is the historic home. And I am not willing to compromise this historic homes. The roof is such a character defining element. I just, I could not support changing to a metal roof. But how do you, if you can't purchase a white tile roof, what are you suggesting? Any uh, old color? I, I, Doesn't make a difference. It, it all, it all, it depends difference. on what kind of the other colors are. I mean, uh, that we haven't, don't know what, you know, is there an off-white that's available? I mean, I, so that I think would be something administratively if they could find an off-white versus a white. I, th I think we could agree to that, but. Um, Instead of voting to approve or deny, can we uh, motion for this to be postponed till maybe January, they do a little more research and see what else, what other options are there. I think we're postponing their leaking roof. And I have had well, a leaking roof since them. June, and I just got my guy there. There's nothing so. to prevent repairs being made on a roof, though. Yes. And, and if the applicant is open to delaying for a month, I'd be willing to to wait and see and see what other options are there. They can do a little bit more homework. They understand, obviously, where the board is, I think. Um, and what does what does the month give us? I mean, I'm not. Gives them another month to search out other options, maybe look other for manufacturers course. or roofers. Yeah, essentially. Okay. John, if I understand the answer that I, I heard, is this is a business practice. It this could is be. Yeah. the way they do business. They don't keep inventory. Yeah. They only meet the manufacturing when an order comes in. So, and I guess that applies to any color. It could be red. Uh, or terracotta, and it's still going to take half a year. It could, and and that might be. But what we have before us is an application for standing seam metal roof. So we either deny that or approve it. I'm saying, let's postpone it a month. If the applicant can find another alternative, instead, it's very hard to do that on the fly right here. I understand that. You don't know what we're going to say before you get here. Um, I'd be willing to wait a month. Mm -hmm. or to, to, to vote, wait. to vote if we're going to allow a standing seam, yeah, or not. I mean, I'm yeah, not for them to pick out because it sounds like we're not going to approve the standing. Are we? I think we, if we push it down the road, they don't have to start over with the correct. Process. I, I, 
I think I just want to make sure of that with Michelle. So because if you're going to delay it another month, you know, you want to make sure that there's a specific mm-hmm. reason for that. But if if they were, let's say, if they were to deny mm-hmm. this right now, but they brought back a different S color tile or barrel tile roof, and it was, you know, a lighter color, is that something that's approved administratively, or if if it's you know, what's there, um, and if it's very similar in color, um, to my knowledge, um, that's something that we can do administratively. Um, it's in our, we have a, in our guidelines, we have a matrix of like what we can approve administratively. Um, and if it's roof material and it's the same or it's the same and it's the color is, you know, within, I guess, the same family, um, that can be administratively approved. So oh, I, I guess, I mean, maybe we at this point talk to the applicant about whether they want the continuation with direction to come back with other colors or if they think that, you know, they'd rather just have a motion and then be able to talk to staff about it administratively. But I'm, my concern is, being from the homeowner's point of view, we deny it. They come back to staff and say, okay, we found an S-tile supplier, that's, but it's, you know, three shades darker. It's not white. It's a then they're gonna have to wait. light gray. It's going to have to come back here anyway. Right, so, just like we saw the the shingle roof earlier, I think that was very. I'm bad. not understand why it comes back here because my understanding is that if they're not changing the tile, if they're able to get the same S tile white, they wouldn't even be in front of us tonight. But he's just saying they can't get S tile white. No, he's saying you have to wait 22. No, no, he's saying they're not making it at all. The they're not making the white, white at white. all. Right now, clarify, but uh, could we clarify that? Or another color, okay, brown. It, that is is twenty weeks, but not the white. There's no. There I, is nothing, I hear no you, production. Rhonda, but we don't know that for a fact. And I mean, we don't know all the manufacturers, and there are, are how many hundreds of thousands of white tile roofs two across Florida. Of white. So there's only so, two. Um, so that's why I'm I'm proposing continuing it to give the applicant some time so they don't have to start over from round zero. Even if, so are we still considering metal? No, I don't think so. Okay, all right. Well, I think we need to state that we're not approving the metal roof. If we could have you come up. Yeah. If they give you a continuation with direction so that you could come back, if it's acceptable to staff, if, if they ha- could be on the next month's agenda, is that something that's... If, if you could come back in a month with, you know, the color options or whatever it is that their direction is, is that something that you yeah, would we, appreciate? Rather sure. than getting a decision tonight that could very well be. Sure. Denial, uh, at least from the reviewing the, the, the catalog of the uh, one manufacturer, Eagle, you know, the, the closest uh, you have is not going to be an off, I wouldn't call it off-white. It's nothing off-white. You know, so it's, it's going to, I'm, I'm going to be in front of you again anyway, I think. Staff would not approve that administratively. It's right. too much of a departure. So that's mm-hmm. why I'm saying when in doubt, staff is going to defer to the board. So mm-hmm. instead of mm-hmm. having him wait 30 days, go to staff, staff then says, well, we can't do it. We got to go to the board. We got to wait another two months to get in front of the board. Let's just bypass all that. Have him come back in January and see what the options are at that point. However, if he could find a, a white towel, he could not have to come back, correct, and just go to staff. I mean, if yeah, well, you know, if he well, if he idea. finds something great in ten days, then he can put his order in uh, yes. and go to staff rather than waiting for another board meeting. Anything's possible, I guess. But working for a you know thirty billion dollar manufacturing company, it's hard to get stuff these days. Mm-hmm. So I understand that. I, I think both staff and the applicant are supportive of a continuation with direction if you just want to give them I'd like to make a motion that some direction that it sounds like you're looking for barrel s tile options yeah. when they come back to be compatible with the house if, if, please feel free after I make a motion if anybody wants to amend um, but I'd like to move to continue this item to the meeting in January of 2023 um, with the direction that the board would um, like to see an S tile option if possible and 
the applicant could then provide us with direction or information they found on um, availability and timing. Second. Um, can I'd we like just get the that. exact date of when the oh, January? It's January 4th. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to uh, amend that, that they have the option of an S tile or a barrel tile. That was the original, that they have two options. And I would like to put in verbiage that if they're able to find the white S tile, that they could have it administratively approved. They don't have to come in front of us again. Yeah, I think that's that's something that already exists. So if, if they don't need to come back, they won't. Okay. All right. So I guess I only want to amend that uh, an S tile, an appropriate S tile or barrel tile. I would, I'll amend my motion to include an alternate of a barrel tile. Second. Second. I'll second. Oh, second. I second it. I don't know if you had to second the. You had to second it again. Yeah, I didn't yes. know. I'm sorry. Rhonda did as well, so. As Go amended. Ahead. As amended. Second as amended. And who made the motion on the, to have it amended? John. 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 <laughs> Ryan Weber absent. Claudia Willis. Yes. John Miller? Yes. Rhonda Saxon? Yes. Kristen Finn? Yes. Jim Chard? Yes. Lisa Sundstrom absent. Thank you. Well. Thank you. Good luck. Um, okay. I'd like to read agenda item 8C for 302 Northeast 7th Avenue, COA 2022-260 um, to the record. Um, and the applicant is here to present their presentation. And Wally's coming up if we could do ex parte communications. None. 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 Okay. <clears throat> Good evening. I'm Don Lang with DS. Oh, wait. I have to say yes. This is the Hartman House. I'm sorry, I did communicate with the owner. Um, she told me that they were gonna be bringing this forward and I wish her good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, good evening, I'm Don Lang with Diaz and Lang Architects. Um, I'm here tonight uh, to present the Goldstein Residence Edition, uh, which is the Hartman House. This is already on the uh, Register of Historic Places. The team, uh, the owners are here tonight are Benita and Jordan Goldstein, uh, myself, Donald Lang with Diaz and Lang, uh, Farida Butkus, uh, who's helping with the wood frame, and Colin Builders. Have you been sworn in? Yes, I stood up earlier. Okay, Thank great. Thank you. Um, I'm not going to go through all this because I read the staff report and it's very thorough, but the house is on the corner of Northeast 3rd Avenue and, and uh, 3rd Street and Northeast 7th Avenue. The shaded area square is on the north side of the house. That's the proposed addition. It's uh, 236 square feet. It's a one-story addition behind a two-story house. This is the uh, proposed floor plan. It's 13.6 by 17.6. The proposed use will be a sunroom. It's going to uh, be a very open wood frame, uh, vaulted ceiling structure with a lot of glass facing the pool and the surrounding backyard. The uh, existing roof, um, the new the new roof, excuse me, will uh, be uh, in keeping with the existing roof as far as geometry, materials, and proportion. Here is the existing. I'm having trouble reading that far. Here's the existing uh, and proposed north elevation. The bottom uh, shows the proposed addition. This is the existing and proposed east elevations. This is the existing and proposed west elevation. You can barely see a little corner of the addition poking out on the left side and the bottom. This is the uh, main street elevation, which is very visible. This is the south elevation. 
uh, for the house, there are no changes that will be visible from this elevation. Uh, this is just uh, the, to show you the contextual streetscape. On 7th Avenue, there's a variety of houses. You're going to have everything. That's our, our proposed structure. You have everything from flat roofs to contemporary to uh, traditional homes. Just uh, the top photos are of the existing backyard, the existing house, and then we, it starts with the, uh, the neighbors. Again, this is as you're going up and down 7th Avenue, showing a variety of architecture. Um, I'm not going to read all these justification statements uh, due to timing. They're in here. I'm happy to review them later if you would like to discuss them. Um, and here again is the, uh, the proposed addition. Uh, it's in keeping with the house. It's uh, in materials and, and scale. The windows are, um, will be identical. The roof will be identical. Uh, the doors will be identical to what was there. And uh, that's it. So I'm open for discussion. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Once again, this is 4302 Northeast 7th Avenue, COA 2022 260. The request before the board is for the construction of a 236 square foot, one story addition to the north side of the historic structure. Some brief history, um, the, um, on the property there currently exists a two story frame vernacular style dwelling that was constructed in 1923 um, and a two story concrete block accessory structure built in 2010 and a swimming pool. The 1923 frame vernacular um, structure was listed on the local register of historic places as the Hartman House in 2005. Um, at the June 2nd HPB meeting, uh, the board approved a variance to allow the guest cottage that was constructed in 2010 um, to exceed the maximum permitted square footage. So the subject property is outlined in red here um, with Northeast 7th Avenue uh, to the east and Northeast 3rd Street um, to the south. Um, okay, so this is the front or east elevation. Um, you can see the frame vernacular style of the structure. This is the side um, south um, elevation of this structure. Um, this is the side interior or the north side. This is where the proposed addition um, is to be located. And the main, the 1923 structure is on the left. Um, this is the uh, north or side east elevation here. Um, and the addition is on the right. And this is a closer shot towards the left side of the uh, south elevation. This is the side street. This is um, along third. Um, and this is, this property is at the end of the, the street, so that's the end there. Okay, so this is the existing survey. The 1923 residence is on the right, and the 2010 uh, edition is on the left. And they're both outlined and highlighted in blue. Um, and this is the existing site plan. Again, um, as previously mentioned, those two uh, structures. And this is the proposed site plan. Um, the addition is highlighted in red. And this is on the uh, north side of the uh, historic structure. So this is the proposed floor plan. Um, it's, it's one story. And this is the proposed roof plan. Again, with the proposed addition um, highlighted in red. So these are the um, elevations. This is on the uh, north side. This is the, um, the side that the addition is being added onto. So that is highlighted in red at the bottom. The top is existing, and the bottom is the proposed. Um, um, regarding the materials, the, um, they're proposed to match the 1923 historic structure. Um, specifically using the uh, tan color that's on the structure and the smooth stucco walls. 
Um, the Outlookers and Soffit will be wood and painted um, white to match the 2010 edition. The proposed materials can be seen as appropriate use for use within the historic structure. All windows are proposed to match the existing in style and color, as they will all be white aluminum with clear glass. The proposed French doors are to match the existing white aluminum frame French doors on the west side of the historic structure. The proposed roof will be pitched to match the historic structure using the same asphalt shingle roofing material. Um, so this is from the front or east elevation. This faces Northeast 7th Avenue. Um, on the top left corner is the existing. At the bottom right corner is the proposed with that, um, the addition highlighted in red. Um, this is the rear or west elevation. Um, uh, the top left corner is the existing and the bottom uh, right is the proposed, again highlighted in red. Um, this is the existing side street or south elevation where no um, changes are proposed on the facade. And this is an, a rendering of the, uh, the north elevation with the addition there um, on the left on the historic structure. Um, so here is uh, two streetscape plans. This is west to east. Um, the the uh, addition is not visible. And this, at the bottom is the south to north streetscape with the, um, the addition highlighted in red. Uh, currently, the front of the property is covered with tall landscaping, but if removed, there is no concern with secondary and subordinate because it is behind the front wall plane um, and it is one story relative to the two story structure. And this is the building color material form. As I mentioned previously, the proposed colors are to match. Mm -hmm. And then here we have the Secretary of the Interior Standards uh, for the board. And then the visual compatibility standards as well. And the findings. That concludes my presentation. Okay. Are there any public comments? Any rebuttal or cross-examination? None from staff. Applicant or? Yes. All right, we're in board discussion then. Start. I think it's very <laughs> modest. I think it's very well done. Uh, been in the home. It's a beautiful example of a restored historic structure within Delray. I think, um, you know, the, the owners are very strong advocates for historic preservation and strong stewards for this property, and I have no problem with it. I think it seems like a very uh, seamless addition to this property, um, and it's set back nicely, um, and I believe the property itself is large enough to uh, warrant uh, the addition. There's plenty of room. That meets all the standards. Yeah. I think it's very respectful of uh, the original building in terms of colors, windows, roof, fits in very nicely. Okay. Um, I did not say that I have known Benita and Jordan for a long time, and I have, but I did not know they were on the agenda till tonight, and I didn't know about this um, project. Um, I'm a stickler for the rules, and you've met all the rules. It's secondary and subordinate. Mm -hmm. It sits to the rear. It's very appropriate. You have a large lot. You could have asked for more, more, more. But you did a nice addition that um, I'm in full support. Could I make a motion? I'd like to make a motion to approve the Certificate of Appropriateness 2022-260 for the property located at 302 Northeast 7th Avenue, the Hartman House, individually listed on the Local Register of Historic Places by finding that the request and approval thereof is consistent with the comprehensive plan and meets the criteria set forth in the Land Development Regulations. Second. Liberal. Brian Weber absent. Claudia Willis? Yes. John Miller? Yes. Rhonda Saxon? Yes. Kristen Finn? Yes. Jim Chard? Yes. Lisa Lindstrom absent. 
Okay, good luck. Thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Nice job. Okay, and next item. Before we start this item, can we take a five minute break? Because we were given some reading material and I haven't had a chance to look at it. So that one, it will be for um, the last one. It's for 303 Southeast 7. Okay. So you want it? Unless okay. you want to break now. No, we can go ahead. Okay. This one I think is a quick one. <laughs> just just for a second. Did they get the... Um... They did. Okay. Yes. And uh, um, this one is actually from them. This is the owner's letter, and it's yeah. a small revision oh, okay. from what was already sent to the, the board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so for the record, I'm Katharina Palavoda, um, Historic Preservation Planner. I'd like to enter COA 2023-003 into the record. Um, we have Moshe. Um, he's here to present for the applicants. Hello. Just before you start, I'm sorry, could we do ex parte communications? None. 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 Go ahead. Have you been sworn in? Yes. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Hello, uh, my name is Moshe, and I'm presenting uh, on behalf of my firm, uh, Sinolovsky Romanique Saye. Um, and really, we're presenting a technical um, item over here. We had an approval for a project that is currently under construction for a, uh, an existing building that is being remodeled. Um, and we previously had an approved um, waiver or a number of setbacks for specifically for the window glazing height and for the window glazing width. Um, and the reason for the approval previously was because the building is existing and um, we didn't want to tear it down completely. Uh, unfortunately, during the demolition process, we found that there was slight modifications once we removed the stucco. The existing structure was slightly different than what we had in the existing drawings. Uh, and so we updated the elevations to reflect the existing structure. Um, it's a total of four inches removal from the glazing height, and I believe six six percent uh, reduction in the glazing width. Um, and uh, I hope that uh, you guys can consider that. Thank you. Yes, you want to see the elevations? Um, this is the. Previously approved plan uh, elevation. This is uh, what we're requesting, which is the four inch reduction as well as the 6% reduction. And that's all. Thank you. So the item is before the board. Um, it's a recommendation to the city commission for um, two waiver requests for a previously approved um, adaptive reuse um, for uh, adaptive reuse and additions to a two-story non-contributing commercial structure in the West Settlers Historic District. Okay, so here is a location in West Settlers. Um, it's at the corner of Northwest First Street and Northwest Fifth Avenue. So um, back in 2020, um, this did come before the board um, for recommendation, and uh, it was approved um, in September, let's see, September 2nd, the board did approve these waivers previously, and then it, it was approved September 22nd by the city commission um, for the waivers. Um, let's see. This is the original structure. Um, it was originally um, a residential housing with parking underneath. And so th this was the approved rendering for the project. 
And then here is the uh, existing structure as it is. So um, it was approved. Um, they went through certification. It did go to permit. And um, while they were uh, working in the field, they did realize that there was um, an issue to the glazing um, and the, um, the, the store opening with. Um, and it's part of the CBD code, which has to be approved through city commission. So because it was less than what was originally approved, they had to come back for um, additional um, changes um, to these waivers. So this is why they're um, back before you again. Okay, so this is the uh, existing front elevation as it is today. This is the south side. This is the rear west elevation. Okay, and this is uh, the survey as it was um, approved originally with the two-story um, residential structure with the parking underneath it. So this is the approved waiver chart. You'll see that they were originally, they did originally um, request and were approved for five different waivers. Um, so the two that are being requested for changes tonight would be right here. Um, the first one is number four, and that is for the glazing heights, which was originally, um, it is required within the um, the CBD code for for, um, for 413E4, it was originally required to be eight, and they did get approved for seven foot two. So um, in the field, since they they needed to, because this is a redaptive reuse and they are trying to you know work with an existing structure, um, they did need um, a little bit more relief. So they are back um, for uh, six, uh, six foot 10 for the glazing. And that is both on the front east as well as the north um, side elevations. So here we can see this is what was approved and they were approved on the, um, the east elevation as seven foot two and they are proposing 610. Like Moshe said, it's about um, a four inch difference. So it's, it's not dramatic, it's very slight, but they, they did have to come back for the approval for this. Um, this is the north elevation. Here you can see um, this was the uh, approved elevations and here they're also requesting the same um, six foot 10 in lieu of the eight foot or the seven foot two that was approved. The second request, um, it's number five. This is also um, to 4, 413, um, E4, um, sorry, E1B, and that is for the required storefront openings. Um, it's required in the CBD, CBD district to be 80%. Um, they were approved on the east side for 75% and on the north side, 62%. So they're coming back now for the east side um, at 69%, um, and the 62 on the north, they are, are staying as is. So there's no request um, that's additional um, for that side. So here we can see the same elevations here. Um, this is the north elevation is approved, and um, you can see that the storefront openings were approved for the 75% here. Here they're asking for um, 69 total. And then uh, once again, there's no change to the north side elevation, which was approved at 62%. Okay, um, because these are waivers, um, these will be your findings to determine out whether or not this is appropriate. Um, as this was already approved, um, you have to determine whether or not the um, additional relief is appropriate to the um, findings. This is also an after the fact request because um, the windows are already in and they're already done. <laughs> um, uh, let's see, here are the rest of the findings. And that concludes my presentation. Okay, is there any public comment? Um, okay, I guess uh, are there any cross-examination of either party, applicant or staff? None from staff. Okay, oh, sure board good. discussion. Yeah. Is there any number that would have been appropriate for staff to approve this? Not, percent. not for this because because it was approved through the city commission. Um, it was something that staff probably couldn't have approved. So because they went through the process the first time, they would have had to go back. I think if it was somewhere between the eight foot and you know the seven ten, somewhere in between that, because the minimum was approved at the seven ten, it's still part of the approval. But because they were asking for less, and then for the north side. Um, 
it was, I don't remember what the other. I mean, just that there's no reality where this would be denied by this board. I mean, it's already done, you know? All right. And it has to, <laughs> is it going to be on the consent agenda? For um, it would have to go back for approval. So after it goes they here, they it, yes, it will go back for them to actually vote on it. Ready to make a motion anytime. Yeah. So we are reapproving a, a waiver that's already been approved and has already been done. Oh. We're recommending approval for Well, these waivers were approved, but just additional relief. Yeah. Yes. No, it does seem... It would have been so easy to do it administratively. I mean, really, we could you know, have, we would have. <laughs> our, our toolbox of Secretary of Interior <laughs> standards and the design guidelines, this doesn't really fall into our, uh, you know, I tried to figure out how to <laughs> research this any further. But, um, yeah, sure, I'm in total support. I wish they didn't have to go through the process. I understand Jan's, uh, John's point that since it's done, there's not much we can do about it. But what exactly is the engineering reason that you need a couple more inches? Somebody measured wrong <laughs> in the beginning. I think he said the material, the stucco was not, maybe it was like, I don't know, what, maybe you can come up to the podium. Thank you. She's this uh, is a CRA project. Um, and Hi, Christine Tibbs, Assistant Director of the CRA. This is our project. We own the building. I have been sworn in. So just a little history. Before we demolished this building, there was really no way for us to know what the conditions were. We just looked at it, and Moshe and Manny, our architects, you know, they did their due diligence, requested what they thought needed to be requested at the time. However, when we got our contractors in, actually performed the demolition. There was um, unevenness in the foundation of the first floor that they did need to raise, which affected the sizing of the windows and everything. And this is the most minimal change that we needed to make in order to still have the ADA clearance and um, meet everything else in our construction documents. So this was the most minimal requests that we could make. And we did talk to Katharina beforehand um, to make sure that we were doing everything appropriately, even though this isn't after the fact. Um, this is the only change that um, is outside of our approved um, construction documents. Okay. okay. Rules Thank are you. rules. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Got to have it on the record. Okay, are we, are we ready to make a motion? Anybody else want to, or? I don't believe I can. I'll be happy. No, you can't. Uh, Ms. Chair, I'd like to recommend approval to the City Commission for the waiver 2023-003 request to allow for the storefront glazing height of 6 foot 10 instead of the required 8 foot, and for the storefront openings to be at 69% of the, instead of the required 80%, the property located at 98 Northwest 5th Avenue, West Settlers Historic District, by finding that the request and approval thereof is consistent with the comprehensive plan and meets the criteria set forth in the land development regulations. Mr. Fan, a second. On the phone. Brian Weber, I'm saying Claudia Willis. Yes. John Miller. Yes. Anna Saxon. Yes. Kristen Finn. Yes. Jim Charles. Yes. Lisa Lynch from Madison. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Hope you don't have any more discoveries. <laughs> uh, now can we take five minutes so we can read this and do whatever. We're going to take five minutes. So we'll just be back at 7.30. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Diligence with, yeah. you, with yeah. this on the screen. What about after the project has been 
just going to go through this. If it could come back here, we can't proceed. So if they make changes and come back here, we really shouldn't. Yeah, I think because most of the stuff is in here. Yeah, that's right. Oh, but she's going to be doing it. She's going to be saying it. But do we just have, we just have to talk about the, the continuance? Or I would probably just, no, I, I, would, yeah. I would go down that route, first of all. Yeah, if yeah. We want to show, we can show the, mm -hmm. clearly see it's reduced. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, well, they're going to show it anyway. Mm -hmm. Correct. Well, we'll see. I don't know if you need to. We're reading the honor. We're reading the honor slides. Well, realistically, the only thing we should be talking about are the three. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know if we want to like focus. But the lovely early one. There's no white tile roof in there. I know. So we're getting. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna bring up. I'm gonna bring up. What you do, a light gray? It's about right. Well, I mean, it's not like you go to Home Depot and get cross swatches for roof tile. We can't get a white shank. We can't get a white metal roof. Oh, yeah. oh, so Right, that's not okay. The, the top. Top. 
standing in front of a house that's barely suitable. Um, I wonder when they do ex parte. I can't imagine when it went by. Went by. No, it passed. I don't know. One of them seems to be very comfortable. I don't think it's strange. Yeah, this way. Okay. She told me they were going to hand it out. Hmm? She told me they were going to hand it out at the board meeting. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, we're going to both share these, right? Yeah. You just give it to me when you're done. They look like they're still reading. Huh? Sorry, they look like they're still reading. So I see. Another minute. It's probably a mistake. Ready to get back on, Claudia? Um, yeah, didn't get to the summary, but I guess I'm ready to get back uh. on.
I would like to enter file COA 2022-170 into the record. Um, it's, a it's a certificate of appropriateness, demolition, waiver, and variances for 303 Southeast 7th Avenue, um, located within the Marina Historic District. Um, the owners, Don and Bianca Pucci, are here to present, as well as their architect, um, Gareth. Just before you get started, could we do ex parte communications? None. None. I did receive a letter from the neighbor to the east. None. I received that letter via the city email. Yes. I'm sorry, I did, I did receive that email. Thank you for reminding me. I didn't see it. I didn't, I didn't see it. Go ahead. Whenever. Okay. Like that's Garrett's. I guess you're going to bring it to ours, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I and I are into this together, so it's a tag team. <laughs> Get both of us. When does it come, sir? Oh. Get it on. Okay, there we go. And then you guys have the little clicker on that side. So you, oh, okay, perfect. Okay. Good evening. So, as you know, we've been here before. And I wanted to start with uh, a little bit because there were some Could you just comments. state your name and address already? for the record and you as well. Thank even, you. Even though she did? Yep. It's Don Pucci. 303 Southeast 7th Avenue. 303 Southeast 7th Avenue. <laughs> Avenue. Bianca Pucci, 303 Southeast 7th Avenue. Yeah. Thank you. Anyway, so I wanted to open up with the, some of the comments at the last meeting had to do with, you know, we bought this house, didn't we do due diligence, et cetera. I just wanted you to understand that we watched Ten minimum videos of these meetings for Southeast Seventh Avenue. Many of them, so we got a good idea of what, you know, what the dynamics of the of this board or a board, and what was approvable, what was not approvable. Uh, we have some of those examples with us. So before we ever even closed on it, we had a reasonable concept of what the house should look like, what we thought we wanted to bring it back to. Additionally, what, what the board would typically look at you know, as approvable. And of course, we'll go through it in a second, what the neighborhood looks like. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so I, I also wanted to bring up what Don was saying too. We actually met with the city, or communicated I should say accurately, with the city before we purchased the home. And they were kind enough to give us all the information we needed to do to do our due diligence. Um, since after we purchased a home, you said 10 meetings, we've probably listened to at least 30 or 40. We've been diligently watching every single meeting over the last four or five years. So by the way, thank you so much for bringing us back for this continuation. We are, we are pleased that we have a continuation. We, we have listened to, there's no minutes of this last meeting in October, so we had to transcribe it. I probably watched it four or five times. Just want to make sure that we got everybody's opinions, comments, uh, feelings, uh, particularly feedback for us for direction. Uh, there was a lot of discussion. I think from a variance point of view, it appeared to be reasonable, but the issue is the waiver on the second story addition. Um, I think Jim Chard, you put together a motion. This is verbatim. The motion was moved to continue with direction of a date certain of December 7th with the following directions. The roof color be changed to white, the door color be changed from orange, and the secondary subordinate aspect of the design to be more apparent. We took those directions seriously. We went right to work um, to meet this continuation with direction of what you requested. The roof color is being changed to white, but after today's meeting so far, I have <laughs> some real <laughs> serious questions. Luckily, it is not a barrel tile roof. Um, we are very concerned about people. We've had it before where people are stepping over. I think I mentioned in the last meeting that our house has an incredible amount of foliage. Like the other uh, applicant was saying, that it's going to get dirty and you know, we're going to have to constantly clean it. But look, in order to get this, you know, we'll go to the white. We understand it. We'll figure out a way. But I hope we can get it. And if we don't, I'm ask your, uh, I, I ask your uh, ability to do what these other folks are doing and to see what we can do if there's an option. But we'll, we're, we are, we're willing to go with the white cement tile roof. If it's available. If it's available, of course. Um, door color, 
I thought it was okay. It was, it was like a brownish orange door color. It's very common for mid-century, but, but again, we want to show you that we're gonna respond to your concerns. We've changed the color of the door, which I like that orange, but we changed the color of the door to what we call a copper. By the way, I have to say that we have this huge banyan tree smack in front of that door. I don't know if anybody will see that color of that door unless you literally walk up and greet us and visit us at the house. Just pointing that out. We'll show that to you later. Mm -hmm. Here's the big one. Secondary subordinate aspect of the design. So what we have done, the concern, and we're gonna go through the standards because it's very important. But the idea is that this second story appeared to some people to be overwhelming. Okay. So what have we done? We reduced the ceiling height. Our ceiling height is eight feet now on the first floor. Good thing I'm short because that's a very small ceiling height. I can't get it any smaller than that. We moved the first floor level back from 7th Avenue. Then we took the second floor level and we moved even farther back from that. We reduced the size. The balcony, I agree. I appreciate some of the comments on the balcony now that we looked at it. It was a huge balcony. It didn't have to be. So we reduced the size of the balcony in half. And the other thing we did, we, we, we thought by changing the color of the balcony railing, it would blend in more. Um, it's not my first choice of color. I like the black or the dark bronze, but we thought by having the white balcony, it would blend in. You might not see the second story as much, although you're not going to see it at all anyway. Um, so we're, I'm married to that. If somebody comes back and says, hey, yeah, we think that's going to look sort of funky, because what happens is the balcony color being white, that means our fence color with the hedges are going to be white which will show more. I'd rather have the darker color. But I think that's, we're happy to discuss that. So I think I'm going to bring this up again. We brought it up at the last meeting, but I think it's important to bring it up again. And, and I'm happy to talk about the letters that you all received because we've been in happy conversations with those, with those, uh, with those uh, neighbors of ours. We know them. So special conditions. This, this, let me make sure I can. So this is a, that's lot one. That's where our lot was originally built. I don't know when, it was sometime between 1955 that they subdivided this lot um, because it was built, in, I guess it was built in 1955. So you can see here that the owners to the east of us that you all mentioned, they also had to build on a subdivided lot. We've researched this and if you can see here, like right where, that's actually their garage right here. They, in 2007, the Historic Preservation Board approved a variance for them to build that garage. They also approved a variance for them to build a, um, oops, I'm sorry, to build a guest house. It's not on this, this came from the tax records. Why the guest house isn't on the tax records, I don't know. But their building is five feet from the setback. So um, I don't have the details. I wasn't there at the meeting. <laughs> I, I can only imagine that they sort of express the same concern that we have, that there are special conditions and they asked for a variance and they got it. Um, with respect to the uh, zoning of, the, we are R-1AA, the minimum requirement is a 9,500 square foot size lot. We know that you know, our home is 8,300, but with the seven, the seven street setback, the five foot, it comes down to like 7,700. So we have a very unusual lot. The backyard of the lot is on the, south side that's just the way it is it's a very unusual lot so i'm sure these are special conditions which we believe are very valid I'll talk about architecture yeah so again at the last meeting there was a lot of discussion oh. about i'm so sorry Go ahead. I, I do want to talk about the letter and i apologize for that um, um so the letter um Contenino was kind enough to send us a letter that was written by hano i don't recall their last name they're german we met them when we first built the house they're very nice very nice couple from germany um, we take these things very seriously. We are very happy neighbors. We like to cooperate. We, if there's anybody that's concerned about something, we're going to go right to them proactively and we're going to make sure they're taken care of. So I immediately emailed them. I have all the emails. You're more than welcome to read them. And I said, hey, let me tell you what they're doing. They're, and so back and forth emails. Their main concern was two things. They were concerned that if we did construction, that their royal palms, which we're, you know, we have beautiful royal palms for the original blank nursery that they would be disrupted with the construction. That was one concern. And another concern, if you all remember, the, the last two flooding, the Nicole and Ian, those last two hurricanes. Particularly well, Nicole. Well, Nicole, I mean, we were there because we were, we were here. The, it lit over the intercoastal, and our neighbor Erica's happened to her too, 
over that coast, it actually, the water came all the way back. I didn't realize it, but the water apparently came back to their guest house. So they were very, very anxious and nervous because they were in Germany when this was happening. And they told us they were concerned that if we got this variance, which is a small 20 by 30, uh, 20 by 3 foot, that if we built an additional construction, that it might push the water, if it ever came to our house, back to their house. So we explained to them, so we've had email conversations, we're going to meet with them, they're, on, they're going to be gone until the 27th, we told them we were going to be gone. They're very friendly neighbors, we're going to meet with them, and they just want us, to, um, we mentioned that we're going to contact our architect, the engineer, and if anything, what we're going to do with our construction is going to make their flooding, or their ability to drain your property even better than it does now. And I think um, we're committing, Don and I, that we will do whatever we can to appease our neighbors, and they <laughs> seem to be very receptive. When we, if we go through permitting, yeah. the city, you know, you know ver yeah. verify this, and yeah. you know our builder over there, Chuck, mm -hmm. the city is going to require and make sure that there's a drainage plan mm -hmm. that is way better than what's there today. Yeah. So like, we don't think they're going to yeah, have yeah. any problem. If anything, they're going to have less of a problem. Yeah. So um, the way we left it with them was that as soon as they, they're on vacation, we're going to be on vacation a little bit. We said we're going to be happy to come meet with them, and they're going to just sit down with us, and we're going to talk, you know, over a set of drinks or whatever, and go over the plan. And there were there were only two concerns that they had. Uh, and then, I, by the way, I thanked Kathadina for, I, we want to hear those complaints. Like, I want to know. I want to do something and realize down the road that some neighbor is ang angry. <coughs> like, full cooperation. I just wanted to bring that up. So at the last meeting, there was a lot of discussion about mm -hmm. what was this house from an architectural point of view. And uh, we did a lot of, we decided to go back and do a lot of research. And we spent mm -hmm. a lot of time so if you look at the, the top one, which is the original, mm -hmm. you know, there is an argument you can make that that is not a ranch. Mm -hmm. Not a ranch in the sense that the carport has a flat roof, and if you saw the plan view of that building, you would see that the roof on the carport is also sharply angled. Mm -hmm. So it just looks more like a modern mm -hmm. place. And, uh, and if you look also at the, uh, you know, the original survey that was done, not original, the survey that was done in like 2008, see about the historic district, they called it, I think originally, masonry vernacular. And, oh, what did they call it? Mediterranean Revival. Boy, that's right, they called it Mediterranean <laughs> Revival, that's right. That's the, the middle one is what it is now, because by 2008, that's what it looked like, is the middle one. And so, obviously, that's not that ranch. So, you know, we could have come in here, I suppose, and said, Here's a Mediterranean Revival. Why don't we just put a second floor in a Mediterranean Revival? They're all over the place. Yeah. But we felt that the original design, we should be true to that. And so we and Gareth came up with the, the bottom one, which is pretty much a carbon copy of the original design from a look and materials mm -hmm. point of view. Now, when you see the dark black areas around the windows, if we had the color chart here, you would see that those are actually, believe it or not, cream colored bricks. So why they came out so dark in that rendition, I don't know. But they're not dark like that, they're cream colored. Uh, and so, you know, we, we consider that this is really editor, uh, masonry, minimal masonry it could be called. I think you guys called it that at one point, or they did in the 2020 survey. So again, how many angels dance on the head of a pin, I guess. <laughs> Could debate yeah, in yeah, terms of what is yeah. the architecture of yeah. this thing. We took uh, that information directly from the Delray Beach Historic the Reservation Guidelines. We went through what is a ranch, what are all of these, and this definitely. When the architect designed this house, he did not did not design this as a ranch. It is a very interesting, unique character house. It has so many different features, like Don mentioned, the angled roof, the the stone, the brick, the stone planters. It's symmetrical. This house was designed as a vernacular home with mid-century elements. Oh. I would agree. Yeah. Okay. So, if you walk down the street, this is Southeast Seventh Avenue. If you walk down the street, and which one is the uh, winner? This one. Yeah. So if you walk down the street, this house here is Kitty Corner across the street from us. That's a three-story building. Uh, this house here is directly across 3rd Avenue, 3rd Street from us. That's a two-story, 6,500 square foot uh, Mediterranean Spanish, I guess, mm -hmm. design, a quite big house. Um, you know, and then again, just if you just go up and down, you know, they, you have the condos, the 
et cetera, right around the same area. So the point being, when you walk down this street, this isn't going to stick out in any way, shape, or form at all, number one. And more interestingly, this house, 300 Southeast 7th Avenue, is right across the street from us. This was approved for a second floor on a single-story building, about the same size as ours, the original single story. And the second story that was approved, you can see it there, was uh, bigger than the one we're proposing. So this is literally across the street from our house. So again, the reason for this chart is to say, when you go down this neighborhood, is what we're going to do affect, going to affect or you know, harm the historic character of the architecture of the district? And no, and it's going to actually improve it. So that's that. Mm -hmm. So this, the next. So the next one is, this is just a plan view of the same walk. You know, somebody asked the last time, how many two-story homes are there in this area? Lots of them. And even if you go up Green Way, you know, you'll see two and three-story homes in that area. Mm -hmm. So it's really not a defining characteristic, single-story homes of this district. Now, these are pictures. I don't know if any of you have actually no. driven over there recently. No, apparently not. No ex parte, so. Yeah. But this, the left one is the corner of 3rd and 7th. That's our house behind it, the fence. The white fence is the fence of the house. And then the one to the right is directly across the street of 7th. Um, you, you really can't even see the house behind it. The second floor that we're talking about would, would be right around here somewhere. Hardly visible. Uh, th this, we did an arborist report and, we, and uh, they cataloged 35 trees on this property. Mm -hmm. And we will retain all of them. Our goal is, in fact, we like the, the foliage. That's the reason, one of the reasons we bought it. So mm -hmm. our goal is to retain as many of these as possible. We think we can retain virtually all of them, if not replant them. So foliage is, we think, an important part of this. These are perspectives now based on the fact of shrinking the ceiling height and pushing the uh, first floor back, pushing the second floor back, and reducing the uh, balcony. <coughs> These are the same perspectives, but with the current foliage and not even all of the current it's foliage. Only, it's only two trees. <laughs> so the left banyan tree right here that's an existing legacy tree, which is just gorgeous. That's going to remain, and that really hides the whole front of the house. And the rest over here, where the addition is going to be, um, you actually can't see them because we didn't put them in. But there are trees lining our neighbor Erica's driveway, which goes along to the, to the right of that addition there. And so that's not going to be visible either. And again, you know, we, we, we are not going to denude this property. Oh, not for the fun stuff. <laughs> okay, uh, Secretary of Interior Standards, we know that this decision has to be made by the law. That includes the Secretary of Interior Standards, includes the land development regulations. I thought it was important that we go through, I'm not going to go through every detail here, but I just want to point out from the Secretary of Interior Standards what we've complied with. With respect to the roof, when the roof was changed in 1980-89, it's actually had a different shape, color, and material. We're bringing back the original shape, the color, and the material. The windows, all the windows, we've been through this before, but all the windows and the door openings of the entire house, front, back, side, were all changed. All the openings were changed uh, because they changed the whole facade of the house. We are going to bring back the windows to where they were and the style um, and the openings and the, the millions, the, the, the double side windows. Um, with respect to the natural hazards, um, we realize this is um, very important for us to preserve. Is our obligation, according to these standards, to preserve this historic structure? Um, we've looked at alternatives. The challenge we have for this home, it's built on a concrete slab. Part of the structure is wood frame. Part of the structure is, is CBS. It would be literally impossible to lift this house up. Um, other homes in the Marine District have uh, been approved to raise their home. 
Uh, and the last storm for sure that happened just less than a month ago, we're just so glad we're raising the home at this point. Is there anything else you want to add to that? No. Okay. No. Okay. Um, this is the most important one that I want to talk about. The Secretary of Interior Standards, what is the purpose of when it comes to an addition for the Secretary of Interior Standards? The purpose of this standard is to make sure that the original historic home maintains its original character. So that if you put something new on it, whether it's a one story or second story or anything, it doesn't diminish that character. So if you were to drive by, so when you drive by 7th Avenue, when I go look at homes in 7th Avenue, I look at the character, the history. I don't look to see whether it's a one story home or a two story home. That does not define, I understand form is important, I understand. But what really defines our history, when you all decide what's the, what's the roof color, what should be the color of the stone? What type of roof stone should it be? You are talking about the exterior elements that define the character of the home. So when I'm driving by, I say, oh, that's a Mediterranean, Mediterranean. That looks like a very modern home. That's a cottage home. That's a bungalow home. The standards are designed to keep that look. Now, here's our challenge. Our home, which is a mid-vernacular, masonry vernacular with mid-century elements, that character is no longer on this home. So the challenge is how do you preserve a character of an original home that no longer exists? So we could argue this. We could go through efforts to fight it. That's just not who Don and I are. We said, look, let's just do our best. We're upset about it. But let's go ahead and return the home to the, historic, to the historical intention Mike Blank, when he bought this land, when he built this home, his intention, because it's such a unique drawing, was to build that home with that style. We want to bring it back. We want to bring it back. Now, we have a second story addition. We're, getting a, we're asking for a waiver, right? We're going through the waiver. And part of our obligation to get a waiver is to make sure that we make this home as not as what they call as overwhelming as possible. So we've gone through, what have we done? to go through because the Secretary of the Interior Standards Amen. recommends that we do things like make sure there's a simple recess connection. There's five, five features that Don mentioned. Those are allowable to hide the addition. That this addition must be smaller than the original structure. The original first and second story is 1,200 plus, you know, two square feet. The addition. The addition. How is this going to be 3,400 roughly? The difference, 1,800. The addition is smaller than the original structure. We've met that. Is the second story addition overwhelming? The second story addition is 500 square feet. Let's go to the land. I'm not going to go through these because these involve compatibility with the rest of the homes of the district. We know we meet those. These are very important. So this is under M1. Addition shall be located to the rear or least public side of the building and as inconspicuous as possible. This addition is in the rear or least public side of the building and as inconspicuous as possible. The addition should not be located in front of the established front wall plane. Every time we have a meeting, we change plans, we continue to bring it back from the front wall plane. The characteristic features shall not be destroyed. Well, they're already destroyed. We're bringing them back. The addition shall be designed and constructed so that the basic form will remain intact if the addition is ever removed. Very easy to do that. The addition shall not introduce a new architectural style. We're actually trying to bring back the original architectural style. The addition shall be, am I up? You are. Wow, it's been 20 minutes? It has. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I wish someone had given me some time about that. Oh, why didn't they send, give me a little, mm, okay. You can have one more minute to wrap it up. I have how many? I appreciate that. Does somebody say something? Yeah, you can have one more minute. Thank you, you have another minute. minute. Thank you, Claudia. I appreciate that. Okay. Look, here's the issue here. Uh, overwhelming. That's a dictionary of overwhelming. Is it overwhelming? Great in amount. This is not overwhelming. This is not overwhelming. This is a simple recess for the reasons I just pointed out. I just want to make one more thing because I have a minute. Okay. People here talked about personal opinions about how we're building this home, the design. You know, we have a family of five, me, I got one daughter in college, one daughter who's about to leave the nest, who knows, she might come back, okay? Um, I've got my mother, older mother who's living with us, will be living with us. Okay. 
Don and I have separate careers. He's, he's an entrepreneur project. I'm a CPA. Um, I'm a consultant. I'm going back to school to get my doctorate to teach, to teach, to be a full-time professor. I need, I need a dedicated space to teach. That is the master suite. Sorry we didn't put that on it, but these are mixed rooms, okay? The additional space that we're asking for is for, for guests, basically. We just want a guest room upstairs, a private area, so that our guests, whether it's going to be our kids one day or friends that come to visit this great city of Delroy Beach, to be comfortable in our home. We have met the law here. We have met the standards of the law. And we have done what you've asked with the continuation. So we ask you to please approve this. So okay, thank the you. minutes up. Yeah. Thank and you very so, much for the extra time. So Gareth is here in case there are any questions. We don't, he does, I don't think he needs to present anything because the only change is reducing the second floor and pushing everything back, you know, away from the front plane further and further. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the time. I appreciate it. Staff. Okay. So this is a certificate of appropriateness for demolition, waiver, and variances. Um, this request did come before you back in October, um, and as the board did have concerns, it was continued um, to a date certain um, of December, so um, they're here before you now um, with revisions to their request. Um, okay, let's see. So the original uh, request um, it was the construction of the one-story addition to the rear of the home, um, as well as the two-story addition um, to the south side of the existing structure. Um, it originally totaled um, 1,636 square foot, um, with an overall square foot of 3,484. The request also included elevating the original structure vertically in place, um, installation of a new swimming pool, and decking on the southwest side of the property, conversion of the enclosed carport um, to a garage, and exterior modification to the existing structure and site. Um, the, uh, the proposal also included three requests. Um, that was the variance that allowed the proposed secondary addition to encroach into the east, the rear setback, um, from the re required 10 foot to six foot seven. Um, the second variance was to allow the pool to encroach into the west front setback from the required um, 30 foot to um, 610. And then a waiver, uh, which was to allow for the relief of the secondary and subordinate um, from the visual compatibility standards uh, for the proposed second story addition. The uh, revised requests, um, here's a list of the revisions. Um, so the second story addition has been reduced by 84 square foot. Um, the second story addition has, let's see, the um, second story addition has also been reduced um, and the setback is now behind the front wall plane. The first floor height has been reduced um, from five foot two and a half inches to, um, sorry, 15 foot um, two and a half inches to 14 foot, um, which is an overall six inches. And then the change of roof tile, um, they originally had the stone mountain, the slate stone, um, mountain blend and they're now um, requesting to do white. Um, the change to the door, uh, which was originally um, the orange is now proposed as copper and the railings and the for the balcony and the fences are, which were originally um, aluminum bronze and will now be the aluminum off white. Um, staff would also like to note that on page three, there was an error. Um, that the applicants did note. Um, we did um, have an error underneath plan sheet for the revisions um, AS1, um, where we uh, mentioned that the um, entire proposed um, was 1,522, sorry, 1,552 square foot for the second story addition. That was actually not just for the second story, that was overall. Um, and I'll have, um, I'll have, a chart um, coming up that shows you the actual uh, proposal versus what was um, originally before you in October. Okay, so just for time's sake, I'll just go ahead and briefly go past the photos. Um, I also wanted to note um, that based off of all of the different changes in architectural styles that 
may have been shown over the years. Um, what we originally categorized the structure is, it's a 1950s structure, um, but it's a ranch style with more mid-century modern um, design. Um, back when maybe previous um, resource surveys were going through, um, they weren't as specific with architectural styles. So maybe in the 1950s, a lot of them, a lot of the structures could have been proposed as maybe um, modern or, you know, masonry vernacular when, you know, they were actually ranches or mid-century modern. So um, with the newer resource survey that um, you'll be seeing soon, you'll see a little bit more um, defined styles. So if there is a mixture, it is noted. Um, so they're, they're kind of things that we're trying to get a little bit clearer um, in the newer surveys. Um, okay, so I'll go through the photos. Okay, so here we have the existing survey of what's on site right now. It's the existing pool. Here we have the existing footprint versus what was the original the demolition plan um, that was before you last um, in October. Um, that has not changed. So here we see a diagram. This um, is what you viewed um, during the last request, and it shows um, the original footage and kind of like a progression of changes made to the house. So here on the proposed second floor, um, you can see this is what was originally requested, and this is what they're proposing tonight. So um, the pink area right here is, you can see there's um, um, a reduction um, to the the second um, the second story addition that's to the uh, the, um, the south side of the structure. Okay, um, this was previously shown um, the last time. These are um, the non-original um, siding. This is it was changed. Um, this is a 1987 permit. Um, the siding on these specific areas were changed from the CBS structure to wood. Um, so changes in the restorations that they're doing to um, the facade in the front, um, as well as the addition in the back, um, don't affect the original structure because these additions right here were considered non-contributing. Okay, this is the chart. Um, this shows what was previously approved for first floor, second floor, and overall additions. Um, and then here we have the, um, the real total for the um, current proposal. Okay, so this was the original proposed plan. And then here you can see the revise, um, the revision. There's no changes to um, setbacks or um, for the variances. So a public notice wasn't required if, um, if there were any changes. So um, regarding any variance um, dimensions for setbacks for the, um, the front, the pool, um, or the, the rear setbacks for the addition, um, those aren't um, proposed to change. Okay, so here we have the pool variants as well as original request. And then here you can see there's no changes. Okay, so oh, this is what you previously saw last time. This is um, the proposed first and second floor plans. Um, noting here um, on the second floor plan, this was the um, large balcony that staff had, or um, the board had concerns with. And then here, we can see there's um, a reduction in the floor plans. Okay, um, they are still proposing to um, raise the structure. There's no changes to that. So nothing's changing here. Um, these are the flood um, adaptation guidelines that um, should be reviewed and discussed as you did um, in October uh, regarding the, the raising of the structure. Um, here's some excerpts. Uh, let's see. Okay, so this is the original front west elevation. This is existing. This is what was originally proposed. So you can see everything that um, is in red are um, proposed changes. Um, mostly on this side, you can see um, the garage being um, enclosed. And then 
Um, here you can see the front elevation is being uh, restored to uh, what was original um, to the uh, uh, original construction uh, for the design of the house. Okay, and here is the revised proposal. Um, the front elevation of the existing structure um, as well as the garage, um, there are no proposed changes for that. Um, there, you, as um, the owners did mention, there was a reduction um, in the, the second story and it was 84 square foot, I believe. Oh, and the, the height, yes. Um, let me see if I can get the height specifically. Um, that was that went from the 15 um, the 15 and a, 15 foot uh, two and a half inches that um, and is now being proposed for 14 so that was being lowered okay so this was what was originally proposed this is um, the rear so um, from the um, the additions along um, the back of the house um, versus what's now um, setbacks aren't changing um, but as previously mentioned you'll see the reduction in the size of the addition and the second story addition um, and then the height of the um, the floor height ceiling height okay this is the original um, north side this is what was originally proposed in October so not too many changes. You can see here all the blue stuff um, and all the stuff highlighted in blue is um, what's original on the structure. So um, you can see that there's doors and windows that are so slightly being changed, but um, it's not different from the original proposal. Okay, this is the original side uh, interior. Okay, so this is where the second story addition is being proposed. Um, no, the size um, of the balcony and the second or the first story. And then you can see a reduction here. So there is a slight um, difference in the, in the revisions. You can see the balconies, um, it's been shortened as well. Um, this is the change for um, the building colors and materials. Um, the area on the left, um, this is what they originally had proposed. Um, when you see the revised colors, they did change um, the color of the roof to white. Um, the orange door um, was changed to a copper, as well as the railings. They went from um, the bronze, um, they are proposing um, now the, the white aluminum. Okay, this is the, um, the rendering for the new revision. Um, I also, I wanted to just make a note. Um, I know um, the Poochies did mention, you know, when you're talking about visual compatibility within historic districts, you know, they are seeing a lot of, you know, second um, stories and one stories. Um, and that is very common in historic districts. Um, and it's, I don't think the second story is so much an issue, but it's mostly um, regarding style is how you determine it in historic districts. Um, if you're looking at something that's notably um, historically a one story um, within the district, if that's one story, that would be more appropriate to remain a one story. And I, I do believe staff did have concerns um, regarding that versus the, um, the style. Um, so I know, okay, so we still have the, um, the Secretary of the Interior Standards. There um, is still a concern because there is a second story on the rear of the structure, which according to um, Secretary of Interior Standards could, um, is not considered um, secondary and subordinate, which is why they're asking for the waiver. Um, other concerns, um, this, and um, the board did mention it last time, was because of the structure, um, this was, um, a screenshot of our staff report, um, specifically because the structure has always been a one story, there was a little bit of issue on um, adding that um, second story addition. Um, we do also note that because of the history, and I know the Poochies did mention that, that the history of the property, because the lot was split, um, that does kind of give them a little bit of constraints when it comes to um, building versus, you know, their neighbors that, you know, have the typical larger estate lots. So um, that is something that um, 
can be considered um, and whether or not, you know, <clears throat> the size of their addition and, you know, the reasons for building it, whether or not that's appropriate or not. Um, we also did um, a screenshot. This was taken from the Delray Beach Historic Preservation Guidelines, um, noting because of the style of the structure um, historically being a ranch with mid-century modern design, um, are the, general, the general characteristics of a ranch is typically a one-story, um, which was noted um, by the board. So um, we just included um, this for discussion. Um, also, um, here's an... Um, an excerpt that mentions the kind of the history of the ranch, the purpose of it, um, and it kind of goes over the, the style of it um, for purposes uh, for discussion for the board since there were concerns specifically relating to um, the architectural style. Um, regarding um, the visual compatibility standards, um, we did know um, the concern, once again, um, because the style was um, originally a one-story um, one home, the board does need to you know, discuss again and determine whether or not they would you know, consider their uh, secondary addition appropriate to um, their existing uh, one-story structure, which um, is a ranch design. Once again, these are the secretary interior standards, um, as well as our visual compatibility standards. Um, as well as the variance findings for um, the setbacks for um, both the pool as well as the, um, the rear setbacks for both additions. And then this is the waiver findings for the secondary and subordinate. That the, um, so both of these, the board needs to um, look at the findings, um, determine whether or not um, the revisions um, to the request are, um, can be considered appropriate. Um, as well as the um, certificate appropriateness um, uh, findings as well. Okay, that concludes my presentation. Okay, are there any public comments? Yeah, I'm gonna hang around here today. I gotta say something. <laughs> George Law, 46 North Swinton. I'm glad I don't have your job. Uh, there's a lot of stuff you just talked about that, that's way over my head. But I do like what they are do doing with the front of the original house, uh, taking it back to the original uh, design. So give that a lot of weight when you make your decision. Thank you. Okay. Yes, that's it. Any rebuttal or cross-examination of either party? More public comment? Yes. Sorry. Hi, <clears throat> Chuck Halbert, 120 Northwest 4th Avenue, right around the corner in the West Settlers Historic District. Uh, I am going to be the builder uh, for the Poochies, and having done, I guess, about 13 historic projects in Delray, um, always trying to keep, uh, you know, maintain the integrity of our history in the city. Um, we've done that saving a couple homes. We just finished one, as you know, right across from City Hall. Um, and I like the fact that they're trying to bring this back to the way it was originally, generally. Um, the two-story thing has always been kind of a, my own house. I wanted to do a little second story on my addition recently, and we didn't fight it. Uh, it was in the back. But when I drive around, especially in that neighborhood, there has been some unusual projects that have taken place. We have a very modern project at the corner of Southeast 7th and 1st Street, which shocked many of us that that got approved years ago. And I'm not sure if it was by the board or if it got overruled by commission. At this board. Yeah, it may have been overruled by commission. I don't know. Um, and there's some other things that have happened. There's some low-E glass. These guys are really trying to do the right thing, and I think uh, it's good for the neighborhood overall. So I'm here to support it as a resident and a restorer of historic homes. Okay, any more public comments? I, I haven't been sworn in though, today. Oh. <laughs> Please raise your right hand by the authority of the notary of the state of Florida. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. My name is Erica Sherman. I live at 305 Southeast 7th Avenue, directly south 
Um, and I know I said this last time I was here, but just to say it again, uh, we do have a lot of tall shrubs around us. That area is wonderfully like a jungle. Um, the woman who owned it before us loved Africa. So she was wonderful. And we've maintained all of that foliage that's along our line. Um, so we're not going to see a thing. And I can't imagine you would from the front. As you're right, I can't with all the hedging see it. So I'm hoping that the visual does count. And that's it. Thank you. OK, anybody else? Any rebuttal of applicant? Do you guys have any rebuttal? Um, anything that I've discussed or anything? Yeah. I just going a little bit closer to the microphone. Thank you. So the you. ranch that you put up there, you know, you did have the ranch. And then the we, of course, went through the same exact guidelines. And we looked at the vernacular, and I listed it, and they had the same similar features as the ranch. OK. Uh, and these are the same historic guidelines that, by the way, on page 7, say specifically that if a home is considered um, if a home is, is non-contributing, if it's usually not more than 50 years old, it was not present during the period of significance, it no longer possesses its historic character, which we reflect as original character. And it's not capable of yielding more information about the period. And they even give the same, the same standards you referenced about the ranch. They even give an example, the residence is a non-contributing building because the people here took out the carport, they actually enclosed the carport, and they changed all the windows. When I asked Michelle about this, she goes, hey, these are the 2018 published. They probably need to be revised. And I'm sorry. I'm just being, being honest here. But I'm like, I, we you can't. Yeah, we went by this. This is the same one that says we shouldn't even be having a contributing home. So I just want to point that out. This home has many different styles. It's eclectic. Okay? It is not 100% ranch. Please keep that in mind. And the last comment, rebuttal, is when you talk about second floor on single-story homes, don't forget the one right across the street from us that was approved with a second floor that looks not that different, even more pronounced than ours, literally across the street. Just while you're standing up here, do you guys have any cross-examination? Uh, Anybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. Staff? Um, I did have a point. Um, I know he was mentioning the second-story structures. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'm trying to see if I could remember specifically what my point was. Um, oh, okay. So um, with with 300, I know um, you're mentioning 300 Southeast Seventh Avenue. That was approved by the board. Um, depending on that style, that was not a ranch style house. I believe that was um, either a masonry vernacular or some other style that could have a two story. Um, okay, thank you. Um, so it was a masonry vernacular style structure. Um, so dip, like once again, it kind of goes to specifically the architectural style. You know, are these commonly seen as one story or can they be one story, two story? Um, so, you know, as the board usually decides, you know, based off of, you know, that specific request that, you know, you're viewing at the moment, like, is that appropriate for that style? Um, but in every other sort of way, um, I understand what they're saying. The request is very similar. Um, another thing, too, that we look at that is also noted in the staff report is the ad valorem tax exemption. Um, this is a contributing structure. Um, so, you know, if the board votes on this and should, you know, it be determined that, you know, the additions are not appropriate, um, they could be, um, like in danger of not being able to get their ad valorem tax exemption for you know all the work that they're putting in for there. So that's also something um, based off of the Secretary of Interior Standards um, and the National Park Service that you know we can kind of consider as concerns when um, we look at additions and stuff based off of um, our standards and the National Park Service standards. So, um, and that's the only rebuttal I have. 
I guess we're at more discussion. Along those lines that, that you were just speaking of, I'm a little confused because during the presentation that the um, property owners made, their house was designated in two different surveys. Once it was designated as Mediterranean style, and I don't know if that's something that they wrote up or if that was in a report because, and then later on it was designated as a masonry vernacular style, but, but where did the ranch style come in? In your report or from the survey? So when we look at um, structures that are um, considered contributing, um, we look at what was original and have they kind of diverted from what was originally there. So if the structure was originally ranch, we would well, ranch with uh, mid-century modern style designs, that's what we would consider it. Um, but I'm asking you, in their presentation, where did those terms, those style terms come from? Were they on a survey? I'm not sure. I don't know um, if the if applicants want to answer. We do have resources that could either be a resource survey or they could be the Florida We're, Master Site File so form. Yes. I was going to ask what the uh, Florida Master Site File said, and we've so, had several of those correct. in that area in the Janus report. Correct. And when you're looking at the Florida Master Site File form, they don't specifically look at the history of the structure. It's what they kind of see is like a, it's called a um, like a windshield survey. So they're looking at the structure as they see it, and they're writing down the elements. So based off of, and the owners are correct, there has been several um, inappropriate additions done to the structure. Um, um, that could, you know, like maybe with the, the tile or the change of the roof and um, the way that the front was redone, somebody who was working on and doing the survey for the master site file form could look at that structure and say, based off of the materials that are I see before me, this looks like a Mediterranean um, revival and things like that. And then over the years, as things change, maybe within the next 10 years, changes could have happened to where someone said, okay, now this looks like a masonry vernacular things like that. But now you're saying in 2022 that it's a ranch style. That was the original Beach historic. That yes. was the original. Yes. Um, so we look at the original um, because specifically what was constructed, you know, based off of visual compatibility and the secretary and standards, you're not and, supposed to change and, the style. And, and I've never seen a project come before us that was considered ranch style. And I've served on the board for about 11 years. I know we did have one. <laughs> so I've never seen anything <laughs> called ranch style. We did have one that and there's went... nothing in the design guidelines called ranch style. We, we do. <laughs> Okay, yes. well that... I've... And in 2020 specifically, okay. we did have one on... Um, it's in the Del Ida Park in Northeast 7th Street that was a ranch um, that came before the board um, that wanted to change the style. And they, I believe they were continued a few times, um, but they did keep it as a ranch. Um, that recently just got a CO for it. And so what would designate ranch versus the um, masonry vernacular? Just depending on the construction of the style. Um, well, I know, but what, what are those differences? So I have the ranch one up here. Yes, I can pull up. So the but different I'm characteristics. Just, saying, just name two differences between the two. Okay, let me pull the so other that, one up. <laughs> because that's what, we're in, that's what we're looking at tonight. Mm -hmm. is, are they meeting the standards yes. for the style? Mm -hmm. and so I'm asking you, are yes. we hitting on the right style? Gotcha. I see what you, yes. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to show you. Okay. So this is the ranch. So these are the characteristics here. And then I can pull up, um, the applicant's presentation that shows the masonry vernacular. So we can see the differences for that. I think you could argue it either way. Well, that's they are very, they are very simple is, designs yes, around the same if time it frame. Were masonry vernacular, yes. we would have no problem with the second story Correct. addition. Yes. And, and so I'm also comparing it with second story additions that we've seen on cottages on, in Nassau. And many of those. It's minimal tradition. Excuse me. I'm sorry. All of them? Uh, Most of them on Nassau. That was the cottage. Cape Cod, isn't it? Yeah. 
we just saw aren't one we, recently. Aren't we wasn't. really determining it from the original plans? Not correct. Not the fact that how we illegally back, put on barrel tile and back down somebody called it Mediterranean. The original design, it says right there. Now, is that your, is that what you wrote up? No, that's or is that's this their, what the, that's the applicants? The applicant. This is up. the applicant's presentation. Okay, and yes. so where did they come up with that? It's what they feel. And where did the 08 and 20 survey? Right. You guys are also welcome to ask the applicant if you'd like. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, we'd like to ask that. the applicant. <laughs> <laughs> it's come from. Yeah. <laughs> research than probably all of you together. I'm sorry. This is very important to us. We take this very seriously. So let's run the 2008 survey where they called it a Mediterranean revival. It's because of how they called it a Mediterranean revival. Um, and they determined it based on the arches they claim, the arches of the Baratal roof. They also in the same survey said that there are no um, improvements done to the house. I know why they made this a, med a contributing structure of this house. Because at the same time they did the survey, and I read that report in detail, they commented that they were very concerned because the south of us, they were taking homes out. And they felt very pressured to add homes in. This home should not have been put in. That's the 2008. 2020, the home's the same home. They now call it a minimal masonry. Hip Spanish style. Now, if you go through these, there are more elements of a vernacular than there are a ranch in this home. Now, and by the way, it says general characteristics on that guideline. It doesn't say specific, it says general. And these cover most of the general characteristics of this home as it was originally designed. This architect was so unique. He's a well-known architect in Miami. He did not design a ranch home. He designed a very eclectic, unique home with the mid-century elements. It's not a ranch. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Um, the original does not have a barrel tile original. roof and doesn't have the arch. I mean, we have to. That's, well, but we I also mean, have to go by our historic planner. We have to go by the surveys. And there is nothing in either of, I mean, there is nothing that says ranch in, e, in either survey. Two surveys, neither one of them called a ranch. You mean the But all of a sudden our planners calling it a ranch list. and saying that it's not appropriate to have a two story addition. And I'm I'm That's not because, sure I agree with that. Yeah. How how we changed that in eighty eight before we were a district, before it was survey. That's that's the problem. These changes have come about from the original. These inappropriate historically inappropriate <laughs> architectural elements have come well, there's a lot of them in Since that, we've been on that district. street. I can t I can I can't tell you the house number, but there's a how a small home, one story home that has a two story garage in the front. Yes, uh, and they and were <laughs> they were I believe removed from the register. That's Fontaine Fox Cottage. They were removed from the register, and they definitely had their tax abatement removed because it was considered inappropriate addition. And, and that's the real fear here, because it they, was they sit in an, no, they f took it over to commission. It was a commission overturn. Oh. But, um, you know, we've lost so much of this district because of inappropriate historic addi uh, additions. And the photos that were shown of all the surrounding houses, the, the rules actually say, you must be visually compatible with uh, historic structures within the district. So we're, you can't be concerned about the meridian and things because the historic district is a carved out island and we look inward. So for our rules, just because that's all we have is we're an island. So we can't judge what's outside the district. We can't use that. To, to justify changing something within the district. But, and also, as Kelly would tell us a hundred times, every project is considered on a case-by-case -case basis, just like she pointed out that 300, I voted against that, 
but 300 did get an addition, but it was a second story, but it was a total different architecture. It was a masonry vernacular home. Um, and it came back much reduced from how it first came in, I'll say that. But, um, let's see, I took some notes. I also feel like, just to, to finish my comments, I also feel like this particular lot um, has to be a challenge because it's smaller than a regulation lot. And so if you were going to uh, add anything to this structure, it would be very difficult without a variance. Um, um, well, I can say that I owned one in the Marin District that was 40 feet wide and 50 feet, whatever, and there no way was a second story going to be considered. There was no room. This lot has room on the south side if they chose to put a one story on the south side. It could accommodate, but that's not the choice that they want to make. But um, And also the, the whole moorings area, which is in the... Uh, 200 block that was all one huge uh, estate and now that has been divided up in five and six and well the little house and whitehead's house at 213 is a little teeny landlock carved in i used to own that i know how landlocked and carved in so it's not that unique in historic districts to have but that's a very lots. small square footage for a family to live in too well you have to consider that when you when you buy a house uh, and your architect ha you know he he serves you to try to accommodate your needs but our goal we serve the historic structure through this owner that needs more room to the next owner that wants to downsize to the next owner our client is the historic structure and the district that's true but we also are allowed to do variances to save structures that are existing because they are maintaining the historic elements that are in the existing house. And I think this owner is trying to maintain the, the footprint of the original house as very much staying historic. And so I think that our goal is to maintain that and to keep that preserved and in order to do that sometimes we are able as a historic board to give a variance to keep the history. Uh, Where does it say in any of our rules that we're supposed to base a decision? <laughs> I mean we're supposed to allow an historically inaccurate element or addition to justify the needs or the desires I think of the that's owner. why all people are adding on to their historic homes because the small you know 700 800 square foot home is not livable in our current society and so in our historic zones I believe and I'm not saying that this is a perfect example but I'm saying that the, the whole idea behind the board and being able to give a variance is that we don't live in 800 square feet anymore not a family of four not a family w that wants a pool the, these were vacation homes in many cases in the past correct I know and the now they're full that time. There. they rented them out every season and so so <laughs> so we we are looking at you know, preserving our historic areas by allowing additions, allowing variances when needed to maintain the nature of our historic homes, the nature of our historic district, and keep the feel of the district, but allow for modern families and modern living in these places. I mean, Gosh, people so have. That's not what's in the Secretary of Interior standards, though. We're if, not supposed to forsake. If there, if the, if there wasn't reasons for waivers or variances, and why do they exist? They exist so we can save these historic structures, like Rhonda said. I agree with her 100 percent, but still bring them up to a modern, livable standard. So a lot of these are, are functionally obsolete if you look at them. And to expect, you know, the reality is 
the dollars per square foot are a lot higher now than they used to be in 19, you know, 85. That's not our job. It's, our job is to preserve it, and protect. But you can't ignore reality. If staff if somebody, can make a comment, yes. um, I will agree um, with the modernization and adding on to um, historic structures specifically because the ad valorem tax exemption, um, because that focuses on extra square footage as an incentive for historic structures, um, that does allow you know people with smaller homes to you know add on. However, you know in addition to the ad valorem tax exemption, you know the visual compatibility standards as well as the secretary interior standards, you know make sure that you know they are done appropriately to the design of the house as well as the district. So I, I think you guys all kind of make good points. Mm -hmm. I, I think the threat to this house is to add inappropriate additions that are definitely not minimal and could cause this building to be unclassified and also the tax exemption with it. That's the biggest threat. Um, I, I also wanted to mention uh, the neighbor that was in very much opposed to this and his property does sit directly behind this, very close on the property line. The guest cottage is original. I know owners from that from a million years ago, back in the 70s. And that it is original. It used to flood. It, w it was a problem. That, that lot is low there. And the problem with 7th Avenue is when it's higher at the front of your house, than it is at the intercoastal. So when it rains, you get the flooding running east. <laughs> and if his flood wall behind you is not uh, high enough, it, when we get high tides, it would flood from the west. So it comes from both directions. But you're filling up your entire lot with hardscape. And there isn't that much space for drainage. Drainage is something that the city engineers will address. And I know you have a two foot wall and is that sufficient? But I mean, it's, uh, it's a pretty filled up lot. As far as your uh, trees, that's fabulous. I love the trees, but I have to tell you, I had a huge banyan in my front yard that I watched slowly die from salt water intrusion. So they're not perfect. Uh, also, the other one at the end of the block blew over in the hurricane. So you can't substitute uh, plantings for uh, historically correct uh, additions. Sorry. Um, let's see what else. Well, that's all I have for right now, but I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, I know you're nice people and you want to have a bigger house, but you know, if we changed every house for every person that came through there, we wouldn't have historically correct homes. I mean, you know, in a real district in Charleston or somewhere where it, they, it's considered a real district, um, you know, you wouldn't even ask for it. But I, I am not opposed to an addition. And I would, would have hoped you would consider the south side of your lot um, rather than one story, rather than a two story. I do feel a two story is inappropriate. I do think it's historically incorrect. And I, I do think it is a problem. So somebody, go? somebody else can go. Hey, Chris. Uh, so can I ask staff, I'm, I'm a little confused because I was writing stuff down and I was, I read mm -hmm. uh, the, the um, staff report and everything. So the original proposal was going from 1636 to 3484. That was what we talked about last time. Okay. And now the new... I'm, I'm asking staff. Oh, so I, I went ahead and I put the um, the additions here um, so you could see what the proposal entails. You know, where is the reduction, actually, the 80 feet? Is it the 84 is on the balcony on the second? 70 on the balcony. Story? Well, I got 
It was 84 square feet, and then the height went to from 15 feet, two and a half to 14 feet. It was 84 square feet. Did you want to ask the applicant or the architect? I'm a, I'm, for I, no, I just wanted to ask. So I see that you put this here, but what I'm confused about is, are these numbers the additions? That yes. Okay, so yes. what is the, maybe maybe the homeowner, I can ask you guys, what's the current square footage of the home? 1,200 square feet includes some of the area in the back, but when it comes to the secretary saying, they want to make sure that the addition, and what we're concerned about is a two-story addition. Right. Right. Right? That's 1,200 square feet. That's what it is. Okay. So, so this is my, so you know where I fall. This is where I have a problem with the addition is the 1848 with the 1200 in reference to the 1200 only because the standards and I know this because I've been through this process the standards and you correct me if I'm wrong um, that's considered massing no no no, no. the standards actually that's incorrect the standards say that your addition should be no larger than the original are you asking a question Kristen well so maybe I need minimally. Maybe I need to ask staff. So these. Um, oh, Bianca, can you get in front of the mic? So um, you're a little hard to hear. Um, well, just when you uh, when you answer. When you do answer, if you could just stand in front of the mic. Um, so the secretary and um, the visual compatibility standards. They specifically say. Um, your addition should be secondary and subordinate to the um, the massing. Let me see, I have it right here. It does mention massing. Um, Somewhere in one of my pounds. Let's see. It's under visual compatibility. So addition shall be secondary and subordinate to the main mass of the historic building and should not overwhelm the original structure. It doesn't have hard numbers. Correct. No. It leaves it up to interpretation. Yes. Somebody asked me. Which is where we're at. Kristen. So eight. Your question, is this massing or not? Well. And John is saying, I have my Subjective. thoughts, but I'm waiting. Yeah. <laughs> well, now I lost my train of thought because I had to ask me a question. You were looking at the percentage. Of yes, the increase I, yes, yes. Relative Only to the original. The original, because 1848 is not a small square footage, even in today's terms. Um, it was in the garage. Yeah, I live unless, in unless the question is I pending. Know. We need yeah. you guys to keep quiet on, on this side. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, and, and yeah. so my my thought was because um, I I know you know I remember last meeting very well, and I I remember us saying you know shrink. I'm I'm just wondering where the shrinkage happened because other than the 84 square feet on the second. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Other than the 84 square feet of and is that the balcony no. upstairs or that's the balcony is another 75 square feet okay so that's not included in the no. square footage because it's exterior right so it was to reduce the mass of the look of it that was the point so the 84 square feet was taken off of the first and the second can i yes you can we answer. thought about moving the second story even farther west and that was one of the but the challenge then is you've got this huge we thought it would look terrible because then you would have this huge open balcony I would cover the first floor. It would look very odd. And then according to the standards, the standards has a recommendation that specifically says, as a recommendation, that the addition should not be as large as the original historic structure. There have been additions done that are three to X as large as the original yeah. structure. This is less. Yeah. Um, we, we followed that recommendation. And, and the, 
And the continuation that was asked for was to do what you can to reduce it. Well, that's where I'm just asking, like okay. the 84 square feet, that was all that you could Only because we felt like it would look too odd to push Bianca. the story back. But Bianca, can you please speak into the microphone? We're, it, it, okay. or, we could have easily pushed the second floor even farther back, but then you would have this big open balcony on the top. We just thought it would look awfully weird, like odd. This looks so much nicer. And it's, it's 500 square feet, the second story. Like we, this second story was originally 1,300 square feet. We've done eight renditions since for over, uh, it's been 14 months now. It's gone from 1,300 square feet, continues to reduce it. But the last not, time you were in front of us, it was how much? That's where I was. Yes, trying it was. To get it was 572, and now it's fine. Yeah, it was 75. And, and it was only because, from a design perspective, we thought it would look very odd. Um, and, and the board said, hey, do what you can to just re push. It was not just reducing the square footage, you asked us to push it back. So, that to us, by pushing it back, it, it's not as conspicuous. So, it was two things you asked to do push it back and see what you can do to reduce the square footage. And so you guys pushed it back. So we pushed it back four feet. I mean, like four we're pushing feet. it back. It's not like we just kept it there. We pushed it back too. Uh, yeah, I just want a clarification on like what you guys did and, okay. Uh, could, could we look at the site plan a little bit? I mean, I, I'm really struck by what Rhonda said, that uh, these were beach cabins, houses, and are not necessarily suited to modern living, uh, particularly if you're children come back home and live with you. Uh, what, uh, in terms of the setback to, are we saying to the west? To the west, the, the west. property sits directly, I mean very close to the property line on the west. But how much uh, is left there? Uh -huh. You know, we wouldn't even let a pool go, go there. But let's talk about this. But, but now, um, how much? If that were, on the property line, is that another, I, I can't tell from this, is that another four feet, another eight feet? If, if what were on the property line? The addition. The addition. The addition. Uh, they're asking 6.9, aren't they? Isn't that what we're talking about? Let me go back to my, make sure I'm talking about the right property. Um, from the west, it says, the variance from the east, the original was 6.7 and the six, west seven. was 6.10. Now it's, I did try to take notes. That's where I was getting confused with all, I didn't write down now. Yeah, it's be, supposed to be, they are asking six, eight, seven, instead of 10. One of the problems with two dimensional elevations and site plans is you really can't envision in terms of the, the whole structure. idea, the actual structure and, and also the secondary and subordinate aspect, because uh, it appears that it's on the same plane. And I'm just wondering, do we have anything that looks like last, a The last meeting we had a picture, and I remember mm -hmm. specifically the second story, remember? There was a big picture of the second story, but this, I think the, the uh, there was west elevation mm -hmm. shows. Renderings, but. Mm -hmm. um, rendering. The applicant's presentation did have renderings. Would you like me to pull those but up? The perspectives. The perspectives. I mean that's a flat elevation. Yeah, because this yeah, is I thought, yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought you had it differently, but um, and also when you're debating about the secondary and subordinate, if it's one foot less than it, you know, the other. Uh, the Secretary of Interior Standards says it should always be the most minimal impact. And so um, I don't, I mean, he, they don't put a certain number on it, but I don't think that looks minimal at all. I'm not sure how to determine most minimal. Uh, you know, maybe that is, maybe that's... Uh, Minimal was, is the house on Nassau. You can't see the second story. But well, that's kind of that where I was getting wall. at with the setback, is if you could set it back further, that gives... Well, what about if they didn't have a second story? What about if they used the south well, part of their lot? I, it, I was, they, it can accommodate that. I was headed in that direction. Oh, sorry. 
Uh, to me, the idea is, is Rhonda is speaking to what the objective is. How do, you, how do you come up with something that today's modern family can live in? And whether that's a second story or an expansion elsewhere, I, I don't know what the answer is here. But I think that we're sort of, uh, we're focusing on that second story. And my question is, what can we do with that? So it isn't, so it does become more uh, secondary. Uh, and it isn't massing. Um, I don't, obviously we're not up here to design it for the applicant, and I'm not trying to do that. Uh, but uh, you know, we have uh, a family here that has moved into Delray and is committed to the neighborhood and, and preserving the history of this building. What, what flexibility is there so they can obtain their objective of making it livable? I don't mean to be hard, but you know, we're talking about a historic building, so owners are temporary. It's the building that we are supposed to be focused on. Um, another thing I, I wanted to bring up while we're talking about all this, they are raising the property. So the everything's going to go up, there's going to be a new roof, there's going to be new, everything is going up. So. Um, I watched the video again. I read the whole Secretary and Tears new book on flooding. And uh, it does say uh, it's not a technique that should be used if the ceiling can't accom accommodate it, if there's an echo effect with the ceiling has to go, the roof has to go. But in your situation, I, I didn't, you don't have many alternatives with um, that. So, you know, to preserve your property, I, that's not something I would fight, but it also does elevate the whole property already. And I know that you're going to try to uh, conceal that, but as you've already admitted, you have a small lot, and it's going to be hard to conceal that. Um, and have a second story additionally. That's just my opinion on that, but. I have a few thoughts. So um, I, I agree with Rhonda, what Rhonda said earlier. We have, and not just we, the collective we, this board, over the last 35 years, have approved a lot of second stories in a lot of historic districts. Um, and some have been done better than others, but right along Swinton, I can name some. Right along across the street over here, there's quite a few. Um, I'm not opposed to the second story. I think on this side of the house is the only appropriate place to do it. I think the style of the house, whether it's a ranch or masonry vernacular, is definitely not, um, clear. There's no consensus on that. It is debated. Um, and the first time ranch pops up, you know, is on the staff report here, or, you know, maybe a year ago. So the reason we do have these waivers, we, and like I said before, you got to bend, not break. So we don't approve this. They sell the house. Somebody else lets it go, whatever. People are putting hundreds of thousands of dollars into making this existing structure livable and bring it up to modern standards and bring it back to kind of what it looked like originally. This is an 80-year-old house. Um, you know, these waivers and variances exist for a reason, for us to allow somebody to come in and adapt a structure, save a structure, and make it adaptable for, for modern living. So. Um, you know, I'm in support of, I, I, you know, for the applicant, this process is frustrating and I get it and it's not supposed to be easy. These, these changes are possible, but the, there's a process and the reason Delray is what it is and why people like the feel and the vibe and the massing and the scale is because over the last 35 years, while we've had historic districts, people have sweated the details. So, you know, it ain't supposed to be easy, and it's not, and, and I sympathize <laughs> with you. Um, 
but that's the way it is. And and you know, if we wanted to be Boynton or Del or Boca, then you know, we we look a lot different than we are today. And that's why people want to come here, though. Um, but in terms of of this structure, I think it's a it's a very small lot. There's limited options. Um, we can't ignore the reality of financial um, realities of today. Um, you know, this is not something that I think people make decisions on on a whim to to spend money in a historic district. And do we want to encourage people to to invest and um, you know restore and readapt their historic structures, or do we not? So, Are we prepared to make a motion. No. <laughs> I, I think uh, Lottie has a few comments. I, I, I've known four different owners for this house. Oh, it's if, been these a bunch of times. if these people decide this is not the house for them, uh, then there will be a next owner. We need our house to be here. You say 80 years. We need to be here. You know, historic districts are supposed to be forever. Um, and I just think that's a very inappropriate addition. They say ranch because our educated staff who have historic preservation <laughs> degrees looked at the original plans and determined it was ranch. So I don't know why we're still arguing about what is it. It's been altered, yes. They're gonna take it back to ranch, fabulous. That, all that part is fabulous. Um, and they're going to raise it, which they need to do. I, I'm all okay with that. But they have area on this lot where they could accommodate addition without doing a second story, which m to me would be historically accurate with the style of the house. Um, and not a second story. But, you know, we may have to agree to disagree. I cannot support it in the rules. It, we can support it to be nice guys. Oh, they want, you know, they want a bigger house, and we want people to like Del Rey. But that is not our job. Our job is to support it in the rules. I would never try and change your mind. <laughs> um, not that I could. I've got a wife, and, you know, I, I gave that up a long time ago. So, um but I'm expressing my opinion, and yes, that's why yes. we have a board. Yes, and yes. if these rules were written in stone, we wouldn't even have a board. It would be X and Y, and that's it. So do we... Can we could, I, be, we could be replaced by computers. Then. Can I ask a question yeah. to the applicants? So um, is there a reason why in your initial research because I appreciate all the research you guys have done I, I can tell you're passionate and I appreciate it um, but in your original research and everything is there a reason why you didn't consider just doing the addition and, and, can, and keeping it a one-story structure what's the actual reason that you decided to go second story first of all I just want to clear something up there is no room to the salt I'm not sure where you get that. There's no room to the south. This is at the lot line on the south. Well, if you're moving the pool. It's got nothing to do with the pool. The pool is going to be on the west. The staff well, report. We're covering the pool. The staff report says. <laughs> okay. We, we had one question. I don't want you guys to argue No, no, no. You're missing forth. the point. We're Let's, covering. We're you filling. Could just I'm sorry. Answer, I'm we'll find um, Kristen's question. Because so, she's the yeah. one who asked you a question. Okay. Thank you. That was the answer anyway. So you have to go, you have to go in front of the mic. Not for me, but for the okay. um, record. We were opposed to the way to, for, to get the one story to first of the with a family of five for us, we would need to get variances for all sides of the home. Uh, we tried going out in the front, by the way, um, but they, even though we thought the home historically had been compromised in the front plane because it was totally changed, um, staff says that there's no way you can go above the plane. If we did, we wouldn't be asking for a variance in the back. Our original designs had it in the front. Um, the reason is because we would have to get variance in from all sides of the house, and we don't want to ruin the landscaping. We, we love this, the landscaping of this home. We want to keep it that way. We'd have to be demolished, some of this landscaping, number one. Number two, even with the one story, like I mentioned, we need, we would like additional space. And, and it's a 500 square foot additional space on the second story. It's not large, it's 500 square feet. 
So we're asking, it's a guest room. But there's 700 down? Because you, you're, you're adding 12. Downstairs is the. Adding um, 1,200. Yeah, is the master and my office, mm -hmm. my office is. So it's a guest room. Sure. Which, by the way, is exactly where the current pool is. So the yeah. current pool is getting filled in yeah. to the south. Yeah. And that's the addition, yeah. essentially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We push that, you know, the continuance that I'm a little surprised because the continuous was what can you do? You guys had conversations. Could you push the house back a little bit? Can you, we, we've done that. Um, we've changed the roof color and we've changed it. And I think you answered the know, question. Thank you very much. I think we're ready for a motion. You want to make one? I do. <laughs> I move approval of a certificate of appropriateness. Demolition waiver and variances 2022-170 for the property located at 303 Southeast 7th Avenue, Marina Historic District, by finding that the request and approval thereof is consistent with the comprehensive plan and meets the criteria set forth in the de land development regulations. Second. Any conversation? Uh, board discussion. Um, I could read you in the staff report where they said there's room on the south side, but I won't bother to do that now. Um, I don't know. There's been a lot of uh, inappropriate infill in our historic districts, and uh, we, we have the tools to ask for appropriate. But that's all I'm going to say. Are we ready to call the roll? Brian Weber, absent. Claudia Willis? No. John Miller? Yes. Rhonda Saxton? Yes. Kristen Finn? No. Jim Chard? Yes. Elise Lindstrom? Absent. Okay. There it goes. permission to follow the rules last night. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, moving along. That was our last. Uh, so, those there. You don't give me what hey, everyone. You <laughs> oh, you're just going to go into staff here. comments. It's on your no, my, your my no legislative oh, items. I had to acknowledge the items. Okay, <laughs> now. <laughs> so I don't think we have any, any legis legislative items. You do not have any legislative items. Um, I did, however, make a note for a future one based on the CRA um, issue where you were saying this shouldn't have to go back. Um, we've discussed. Um, trying to adjust the process to have there be a sort of like within 10% of the board approval and administrative evaluation. So it was a perfect example to yeah. sort of move that thought along in the future. So, um, you know, uh, we'll make a note of it and try to move into process as quickly as we can. We've got our hands full right now a bit with some other efforts, but it's on the list. Um, it's not just board time. It's applicant time, time and, can, and, and, you know, they are, you know, somebody has to write a report and it goes, yeah. So, um, so if that legislative item comes to you in the future, I hope you will remember today and um, help us move that forward because I, um, I think it's just a perfect example for the gut feeling that we needed some level of a release valve administratively. Um, I do want to thank you for your time. I don't always see you. You're in great hands with the historic preservation team. Um, I know, um, you know, there's a, a lot of thought, ex you know, for all the cases today, but you did also just, um, I think, evaluate docs. I, I don't remember if I was physically here or just watching at home because they all kind of run together for me after a while, but um, it was a very thoughtful, I think, decision um, that you weighed. And even if um, it wasn't like a hard no on everything, ultimately evaluating the whole project um, resulted in a 6-1. And I know that while last night um, the commission voted to um, grant the appeal and move that project forward, 
Um, you know, I do know that they, I hope you heard that they said more than once they hate to go against the board and they were wrestling with it and it was not unanimous. And so I don't want you to uh, think that we are not listening to you because we were. And, you know, I think the great news is docs got designated and hopefully we also got slanted windows you got the slanted windows in the end yes we did um, we don't like to particularly at the commission level we don't like to make design decisions that one however there was an image it was very clear i was like yes yes yes, yes. we want that <laughs> so um so at any rate um i hope that you don't find your efforts disheartening because all of this all of these things do moved move everything into a better higher quality um arrangement for the city it's not always you know sort of the best or great or what we think would have been the best or great but but your hard work is truly appreciated so um, there was a question at the beginning from uh, Mr. Long about um, um, Swinton Social's cottages um, they I, I think that you know in the last year that the ownership changed over or I think it's been about a year um, and they have come in um, to try to figure out how to take the existing approval and move it forward. There was a pretty significant time constraint that they were under for the before the approval would expire. And um, unfortunately, we had some hurricanes and some other things that you know made uh, the governor's emergency extensions possible. And and so we expect that they're coming in to regroup, but they are trying to move forward. And I think this maybe has given them a minute to be able to not um, have to rush through, you know, some other technical things that were happening and, and, and try to really get a permit set pulled together. So we're hopeful. Um, we are, of course, looking at the condition of the buildings. Yeah. There's some in there, but I, I am hoping that it's gonna move forward and if, if we get a new owner and those extensions expire, then it's over. And it does not change the code enforcement action and the evaluation that we're doing in terms of the buildings, particularly the ones further to the south that are, um, you know, starting to really show that no one has been maintaining them in, in any real effort. So we're we're on it, and we're in contact with the existing owners, and, and we're, we're we're hopeful. But we'll keep you posted. You know, hopefully something is going to come in shortly for a permit, and we'll go from there. Um, that's what I have. Uh, if there's any, I know you've been here for quite a while and you've been slugging through a heavy agenda. Is there? You've been up late, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna piggyback on the code enforcement thing mm -hmm. for a minute. Um, and you probably can't answer it because I sent my email to Michelle yes. Yes. to ask her to give me a code enforcement or give us a code right. enforcement update on the Marina Historic District. There are several right. properties that they want, you know, or they're, they're just, they are on code enforcement's list very heavily. Let's just say right. that. And I, I wanted to, to, I want to keep pushing there, right. uh, pushing it to make sure they're still on that. And you don't have to give me an, uh, us an update tonight, but I think it would be very good for this board to know when there are threats in our historic district and code enforcement proceedings, because I remember how mad Ben Baffer was when we went mm -hmm. through the process, uh, our previous chair, uh, and we were approving the demolitions or whatever we had to do with the later phases of... Uh, Sunday project, Sunday whatever. Um, you know, why Why did you let the buildings get this way? Where was the city? The city failed, you know. He was kind of upset about that. So I think if we knew and we could put pressure and we could put it in the minutes, it would behoove us, if we have someone come up and want to demolish, that's just let their house go bad. So that's a future question for when you haven't worked late at night. No, it's okay. I, I know I spoke really briefly to Michelle prior to the meeting, and um, these, I don't remember the specific property we were talking about, but I know that there has not been a change in the status, so it's still in the process, and okay. there hasn't been an action. Um, I think um, in terms of historic properties that are scheduled for a public hearing before the before a code board, it might be appropriate to let, to let you know, but I, the other thing is, we are a little careful. I mean, that you know, it is something of a of a 
um, carrot and a stick and some people need help and some people just need to be reminded and other people are in financial straits and so the, the purpose you know the at the end of the day whether it's a historic property or not the goal is compliance so um, you know we you know we have certain we have limited resources and I think maybe the I think maybe it's a prioritization that maybe we need to try to do so that the historic properties, you know, are, are maybe brought up in the sort of line of the staff having yeah, to. On the task yeah. force, historic task yeah. force, we ask for a half a day person <laughs> at so, least. Yeah, yeah. The other thing, though, is as we advance the technology with um, the city um, and code enforcement and community improvement system is actually moving in next, right? We've started. Um, taking uh, the more simple building permits through the um, online system it's it's up it's it's moving not every permit type is available yet but you know we're moving you know Michelle Hewitt is one of the people on this team that's getting the most um, early uh, training because she's working through window and door changeouts and we don't have the full construction at live yet but um, we are getting there and one of the things that the system allows us to do is prioritize certain projects. For example, the comprehensive plan tells us that um, affordable housing initiatives should receive um, faster permitting. Now, um, and then um, and historic preservation. So we are a we're able to actually we were able to program the new system to actually pull those projects up. It puts them, I guess, in line first on the desktop of the reviewer. That doesn't, you know. But hey, we, we issued 750 permits last month, so getting to the top of someone's review pile, I think, is useful. Um, I do think that it is, an, and that's an incentive that you know we like to throw around. And then I reach down to my Incredibles background and say, if everyone is special, no one is special. So we need to be very purposeful in what we expedite. So uh, right now, following our policies that are adopted, it's, it's affordable housing and then historic preservation as well. You know, um, there's CRA, which tends to overlap with affordable housing and things like that, but city and CRA initiatives, things like that. So, um, so I'm hoping that the code enforcement issue, we can we can do something similar. So we're keying in the historic properties. So I'll I'll keep you posted on that as that system fully develops. Okay. I think though that prioritization within historical makes a lot of sense too. Mm -hmm. And it was what happened in the Sunday Village area to homes there was very, very unfortunate. And those, at least from my point of view, should be prioritized because they're right in the heart of our city. People go mm -hmm. by them uh, every day. And I realize all neighborhoods are important and all right, causes right. are important. But uh, even so, I think in the heart of your city, you, mm -hmm. um, that, that should be prioritized. It's also um, Sunday Village. I mean, unfortunately, um, the previous owners um, you know, didn't view maintaining buildings that were slated for demolition is a high priority and we couldn't always see what was going on behind the bushes and things like that um, so and then the demolition by neglect ordinance that we have in place now which allows us to take some proactive action was not in place you know and so there's I think I'm looking at Kelly because there's some legal um, decisions in terms of if it could be applied to something that was already in with an approval and an effect and you know we were figuring out how to properly roll that process out but it's a tool that we have now which is really good so um i, I have a different can question you, can you help on that <laughs> I, I, if i could just respond to claudia just yeah. for a second yeah. too as far as like the code enforcement issue i think you guys are always welcome to ask like what the status is or things like that but i think you know we have to be careful and you guys have to be careful as well that you know when we're talking about code enforcement we're still maintaining the lanes that you know your historic preservation board and they're the code enforcement and they're the ones responsible for the compliance you know when you say you know put pressure on the properties to do that that one, that's going to mm -hmm. rest with the code enforcement and mm -hmm. you guys need to be able to be um, able to fairly evaluate them once they do come in because that's what code enforcement is there for. They're gonna to try to get them in compliance and then we're gonna bring them to you. So, you know, we wanna just walk a fine line of being able to give you the information that you're seeking, but also saying, you know, 
resting with code at this point, you know? So yeah. I, I just want you to be aware that sometimes they might not be able to give you as much of an answer as you, yeah. as you want. And we may limit your discussion about that as well. Yeah. And, and I know so there's a the process, conflict, the response yeah. time and all of that. I just know when I'm hearing that three or four owners are hoping to get to demolish their houses and they are coming, you know, whatever. So I just, and they're ripping out floors and I get nervous. No, I hear you. And Thea, the question I had is, for those, those buildings that have unique features who, which have not been deemed necessarily historic or they're not in historic districts, but you as the head of planning or whomever um, thinks we should try to save and be mm -hmm. proactive uh, instead of be in a position where all of a sudden uh, a, a, particular area is bought out and it's going to go from one story and historical little paths and, and so forth to three or four stories with ne not necessarily any architectural uh, uh, exception. And when I'm talking, I'm thinking specifically of the little area on South Federal, 6th Avenue, just below Atlantic, Avenue, uh, right next to the old Ace Hardware. It's uh, 50. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, it's 54 <laughs> and 54 and a half, sort of like mm -hmm. Harry Potter, uh, on Southeast Sixth Avenue. Mm -hmm. And I can just see a developer coming in and buying that up at today's prices, and the current owner not being able to turn it down because it, it's such a great offer. Mm -hmm. But don't we have tools like selling air rights and so forth that and maybe that isn't the right tool but well, i don't think it's a bad tool we don't have it at this point we've Are discussed it no. oh no, no i was gonna but, say no. 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 A german bakery was but in there was, german bakery yes. oh my gosh it's 1925 it's, it's got the, it doesn't mean it wouldn't qualify, qualify. Oh my God. it's it that Matt Gracie owns it. but it i, I think that's a really good idea and just too yeah my, my point is going through the historic mm -hmm. designation process mm -hmm. takes time and money and staff and in the meantime uh those sorts of what i believe to be character defining process their mm -hmm. parcels in, in delray get lost right so we um i think that's a really good observation i think that's a, an important observation because these are you know we're spending of course we spend a lot of effort on these buildings that are already at least under the umbrella of a district or some sort of designation but there's a lot of resources like mr chartis referencing that are still there that are not protected or haven't even been the subject of a survey for example um we have talked a lot internally with the team and, um, you know, transfer development rights programs, you know, in the benefit of our city, really being careful with height and density and it's not easy to go up or have more, it actually makes it a perfect candidate for, a, for something like that to be successful. Um, we were discussing this as far back as when Mr. Stillings was the director here and we actually had a discussion with the commission at that time and and the sticking point has always been the receiving site if you're going to pick it off of somewhere and move it over where's the right place for that additional height and density because you know we're we like our low skill um you know city i i think we need to find those op opportunities though we absolutely need you know i was um in a position in i don't even want to tell you the year um, when I worked for West Palm Beach, it was before I had my son who's 19. So yeah, we're getting up there. Um, and um, the resources downtown there that were really valuable were the churches. We have made us a network of churches and um, moving into designation or ad valorem, you know, benefits really didn't appeal to them because they were already not on the tax roll. Um, and they were under tremendous development pressure because you could build 20 stories on top of some of them or 10 or whatever. And we successfully did a transfer of development rights where we were able to provided you designated, renovated, because you had to fully renovate the building so that it was, it was shored up for the next 50 to 100 years, 
Um, we must have moved a million square feet around downtown, taking an area that can only build 15 stories and letting them build 20 in exchange. You know, St. Anne's Church and Chapel was was um, designated. So there's ways to do it, and and I've I was lucky to actually have a little bit of experience with that somewhere else. But I think it's a great idea. And, and I think part of the strategy is what are the receiving areas? Because That's the, 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 the receiving the areas are not Atlantic Avenue downtown. Right. No. Uh, but Let's annex some land out west. Well, <laughs> dump it all out there. Uh, that's <laughs> that's a possibility. When when uh, the ag reserve went in, they were talking about mm -hmm. selling air rights to the east, but. I mean, I, there could be a lot of argument around them, mm -hmm. but Congress Avenue, military, mm -hmm. uh, certainly not downtown, certainly not Pineapple Grove. Yeah, uh, I have one quick question. So I'll see all the park. Discussion came up earlier. Thanks. This is a question for Kelly. So docs was last night. We can talk about it here amongst the board. Is there any possibility that's coming back to us at some point? I want to be sure that we can if we have a conversation with somebody who happens to be on the board, we're okay, or? The last Steve Michaels project came back to us. Oh, it, <laughs> I have a feeling it's gonna come back to us, but I wanna put the question out there. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't guarantee that it won't come back to you guys. I mean, um, look, yeah, but, ultimately you live in your part of this community, you're gonna discussing there isn't an active yeah. application right now. Okay. Maybe it would be the best way to look at that, although, you know, they, sometimes things get reconsidered at the following meetings and all of that. I don't, I don't, yeah, I they surprise me sometimes. So, but right now that's a decided thing. And I, I don't know, Kelly, how, how, when is it? Yeah, I, I, I don't know the answer to that either. I mean, it's, it's technically a final decision. A final um, action, yeah. You know, there is a reconsideration that I guess could happen at the next meeting if possible. I mean, if they wanted to. Um, and then, you know, the only next step for them is actually to go to the circuit, or, well, they want to go to the circuit court as somebody, who, you know, um, and then I guess, I guess the only way it would come back would be if there was like a modification or if there was like, um, or if it, if it were to be sold and they didn't use that development approval. Well, and any modification would be a new application, and we, it would be an active application. And, yeah, and we okay. would we would let you know. As far right? as the decision yeah, last night, I think yeah, that final. that is final a final action. decision. So we can talk to. Them. Remember, some of our yes. uh, residents have watched the last thirty or forty meetings, so you, we have to be, you know, we well, I, that's we why can't I talk about careful. it for thirty or forty meetings. I can find better things to do with my time, but <laughs> <laughs> I know I wish I could say the same. I watch them all. <laughs> that specific development approval is is final. It's a it? final action. Yes. It's a final it's action. Final there action. is nothing active right now. So if that changes, we would let you know. If there's a new modification that comes in and is filed, um, but even then, you know that whether it's a conflict for you or not. I, no, I just I just want to be able to you know, Chris and I are on the same boards, and if I want to have a conversation with her about. You know what happened and oh. what's going to happen and so mm -hmm. forth and so on. I just want to make sure that We're nobody's going to hold us against uh, against us or anything like right. that. Right. So. I think in clear good conscience, you have a final action. I, I have one thing to say, which I don't think is against. Um, somehow, commission always feels sorry that the applicant has taken so long to get here. I look at the stack reports, and I re I'm just reading those. I'm not preparing those. I'm not sitting in the yeah. meetings. I I think they should be standing up and applauding for staff when <laughs> something like that comes mm -hmm. in front of the board. I can't imagine the man hours that the city puts in for a project like that. So you are you have a really strong team. Um, Michelle and Katharina Michelle I mean I, I've, I've always said the day that I get caught at the podium looking like a deer in the headlights it's not going to be for a historic project because they are so thorough so you're in you're really good hands um, and um, yeah I, and and the, the great thing about the city's process is that the the um, communication and the comments are all in writing and they're all dated and we can show everyone here's the 40 comments that we do you provided. keep an hours list per project do you know how many out city man hours are actually spent 
no, we we could probably start. <laughs> so, and then, then they have to track know, just one more when thing. Somebody comes <laughs> so, in with an inappropriate yeah. inappropriate project because you can ask for anything. Mm. It costs so many staff hours. I just I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. Thanks. But I appreciate your comment in the beginning about acknowledging us because yes. I Yeah. You know, I've had discussion today with you know about last night's decision and someone said well why do you have a historic preservation board if it's if our decision is not looked at so i appreciate you saying you know that we matter it, you know what it i does. mean our you, voice matters because like john said we a lot of us live in historic districts i'm not i'm not here because i don't know the rules and the regulations I'm not saying i'm perfect um, I try to abide by everything, but you know I, I appreciate you acknowledging us because of course. you know we we try to follow our Bible and Claudia Claudia's got that Bible right there. I, know, I so. have to apologize for everybody for having. Don't apologize. Like I yeah. want to yeah. hear. I want to hear like Secretary it. of Interior standards in every decision. <laughs> I just had one question about, and you probably you may not know the answer, but. Um, I get asked by my neighbors about the signs. Um, we have a sign missing still at George Bush Boulevard and Northeast Second Street. Do you, do you know? No. But oh, I okay. Um, so it's been missing for a while. I know Michelle had it on her radar right. to look. I know that there was delays and something, but it's okay. it's just our the black sign that um, got the hit by so the I, the. Uh, the uh, Delaware Beach Preservation Trust um, has been speaking with Michelle. We approved to purchase at least one, and I believe that we designated that was going to be the one at Old School Square just in our last meeting. Okay. Um, but ours was a replacement. That we so does that ca does that count? Because it was there, it got hit by a car. But they lost Price it. Mentioned. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I know. I mean, yeah. It so has I mean, to be remade. Yeah, right. Price mentioned me just this past week that yeah. that was one of the ones that they were looking at. That they're that the, the so preservation they're, trust they is paying. So they I can't remember how much they cost, but we. Oh, I know they're not cheap. Twenty three hundred something. Yeah. So we approved to pay for one. One. And then it was that was probably one of them because that was totally lost. Totally gone. And then uh, the one at Old School Square came up because that seemed to be it was missing and it's an important corner right. and so right. we agreed to do that one. So I don't know what's happening okay. to the other one. Yeah. All right. All right. I'll well, check the only in other thing I had was Elise and Michelle, we're going to get together and write a letter in support of Carver oh, yeah. to commission, and mm -hmm. neither one are here tonight, so I just wanted to bring that up. I, I saw something come from Michelle with Carver in the subject line, so I'll have to go okay. back and find it. Yeah, yeah we're, uh, the Delray Beach Preservation Trust is working hand in hand. We've taken the lead on that, um, and if, if you don't know, Carver is a seven acre campus mm -hmm. and it is owned by um, the education board school board, school board yeah. and there are certain things that have to line up before anything can be moved forward but there have been some letters and communication that indicate that it should be on a, a historic uh, registry um, and statewide even we have gotten letters that indicate that and so we are big proponents of that it's not designated yet once it got designated then more would come toward this board but um it's a very significant site um, um, for delray and i'm switching to another subject um, there's a problem in that tonight uh, neither jim or got the uh, letter that came from the neighbor of the project of the, that the 303 every time when someone sends an outside thing i i rarely ever get and it. i'm thinking okay. maybe it's because, because i don't think he my was it was a long letter he was strongly against mm -hmm. this property and he talked about drainage and the closeness and everything and now he's going to have a balcony even closer but um 
I think it's a problem that y'all are not getting the, the letters. So maybe you need to talk to IT or something? Well, I did, and I got, so then I. Maybe he had the wrong email. I didn't look at your Well, mine is, mine is different than most. Like most is something, but mine has either a dot. I think mine's like a dot in or something where maybe that throws people off. Yeah, I remember that. on the city site. Yeah, it could be. All right, so the. No, it's oh. right, but it's just different than, like, I don't know that you guys. I get most of them from Diane, so they. I get them from, I got, I respond to you today, right? Under, see, it, and I don't think anybody else has I, I'm that. I'm Claudia. Are you under Claudia Underline Willis? Oh, you are. No, maybe I'm not on that yes. side. So, uh, is the is the is the breakdown coming from the city or from somebody from the outside? I think it's somebody from the outside where okay. they think, you know, how usually when you send an email to a company, right. it says like your name okay. and then active. I wonder if it's listed on the website and if something's wrong there. We'll we'll do, all right, we'll try to look into that. Diane, you try to help me remember to check it. There's ever been a Kristen Finn. Right. Maybe. <laughs> City one and only. But Jim didn't get it either. Okay. I can't it's hard to keep up with <laughs> all like, oh, yeah, right, yeah. no, want to bring up for the board. Uh oh. Uh, are we adjourned? Sounds juicy. Uh, adjourn us. All right. Oh, oh, January 4th. <laughs> Hang on. Thanks are still on. <laughs> did she, did she adjourn? Adjourn? I'm leaving that up. Claudia. Claudia. I think you did adjourn. I did. Oh, okay. She did. She did. She did. Bang the gavel. Bang the gavel. Bang the gavel. <laughs> no problem, Claudia. Well, it's already no, okay, great. Great. <laughs>